شروع ہوتا ہے دوش ود آؤٹ اے ای پیس ود اے ای پیس اوکے سو دیٹس ون ہنڈریڈ سو پالیتان ہاتھ ہی نیو ون فورٹی تھری جس جس تو گیو یو ای 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 انادر دیتا دیت واس گیون تو آس بائی دا تاسک فورس انگ بینی گئی سامین اس ون ہنڈرڈ ایٹ تاؤسن نائن ہنڈرڈ فورٹین وین وی آس پاگور دیسیمبر تین اف ٹوینٹی نائنٹین پلیس کوریک اس ایف ایف دیس اس رونگ پاگور گیو اس نائنٹی سیون تاؤسن ٹو ہنڈرڈ ایٹی تری So if you look at the figures, secretary, DEPCOM, PAGCOR, BIR, and all resource persons, may problema na ho tayo sa numero ng foreign workers in Pogo industry alone. And we're talking about legal. Legal po ito, supposed to be. Hindi pa natin pinag-uusapan yung mga illegal. So ayan ho yung numero. Okay. Siguro kahit sinong titingin ng mga numero na yan, medyo malaki ho yung uh, diferensya. Now, we go to the illegal uh, workers, undocumented uh, workers in these establishments na na-inspect po ninyo. Ilan po yung lumalabas na na-inspect po ninyo na illegal pala? Wala silang uh, visa, wala silang working permit. Your Honor, as of August 2019, there are 6,678 foreign nationals working without the necessary AAP, Your Honor. Okay, Secretary, 6,000, tama yung record namin dito, 6,678 foreign nationals in legal pogos. In legal pogos, Your Honor. In legal pogos, working without permits. In the legal pogos, because the the inspection happened, doon sa mga pogos na legal, may lisensya. Is that correct, Secretary? Yes, Your Honor. They are working in legal pogos without the necessary AEP, Your Honor. And and. We, we take note that ito lang po yung na-inspect natin, which is how many percent of the total of the total 286, hindi ho ba? Tama po, Secretary? Yes, Your Honor. So, ibig sabihin, legal na nag operate itong Pogos, dumating ho ang inspectors ng Dole, nakita itong 6,678 na walang permits wala pong AEPs. So, what is their status? Are they tourists? Are they claiming to have any... What was the... Uh... Your Honor, when we discovered the 6,678 foreign nationals working in Pogo, uh, Pogo establishment, we referred them to the Bureau of Immigration. And, and what do you do, uh, sir, uh, DEPCOM, with this uh, 6,678? Uh, Where are they right now? <coughs> uh, sir, uh, there's just a chronology of uh, events. Since uh, the, ins the initial inspection of the Department of Labor, which resulted in the 6,678 findings, uh, which consists the initial list of... Uh, allegedly foreign nationals working without the necessary permits. This, the, the list was forwarded to the Bureau of Immigration. And uh, on uh, September 19, 2019, the BI validated the 3,969 workers out of the 6,678 were workers of great empire that were issued special work permits by the Bureau of Immigration. Then, uh, you mean to say some of them had SWPs? Yes, like sir. Like expire uh, lang. So parang hindi nila alam na hindi na sila pwedeng mag-renew o hindi na sila nag-renew. So meaning to say out of the 6,678, some of them, I don't know if you have the percentage mm -hmm. or the breakdown, kung ilan dito yung nakakuhan before ng SWPs. Is that what you're saying? Some of them could, be, could have a valid 
SWP at the time, sir, or some valid uh, during the validation, sir? No, they were inspected according to uh, Sec. Bello. They have no working business here. Yes, sir, because I think during the inspection, they were not able to present the SWP to the inspection, inspection team of the Department of Labor. But upon verification or validation by the Bureau of Immigration, some of 3,969 were issued special work permit. 3,000, I'm sorry, can you 3, give me 3,969. 969. Oh. So meaning to say, itong 3,006, 3,969, hindi pa expire yung SWP when they were inspected. Yes, sir. That's correct. Meaning, legal pa rin pala sila. Legal pa rin sila. Oh. So when are, are they going to... Uh, 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 because they, they can no longer renew, they would have to undergo the uh, labor market test. Is that correct? To get the AEPs? Um, at, at that time, sir, September 19, they could no longer renew the SWP. So they had to apply for a AEP. What about the rest, the others? Were they deported? What happened? Uh, so there, there's a series of uh, validation conducted by the Dole by the DOLE, by the PAGCOR, and all the member agencies of the Energy Agency Task Force. And uh, at the end of February 6, 2020, the, the remaining number of uh, allegedly foreign national illegally working as originally from the 6,678 in the list, uh, it went down to 52. And uh, this PP2 had already left the country uh, on February 6, 2020. Are they paying taxes, these guys, the 6,678? Do you have the data uh, uh, from, from the BIR with regard to these uh, illegal foreign workers na, hmm. na inspect ho if they are... Uh, Paying taxes or kahit sino po, DOF or BIR can can answer. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, Senator Pimentel. Sir, our data is based on compa per company, so we don't have any data based on the individual's team. That's the thing, Secretary. Eh, you made mention that BIR is with you in the inspection. If if they are with you, then outright they will be able to find out if this six thousand six hundred seventy eight. Uh, are, 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 are paying their taxes. Your Honor, the assumption there is that these foreign nationals working without AEPs do not have the TIN. That, therefore, they they're not. have not paid their taxes. So outright, we can say that they are not paying taxes. Yes, Your Honor. So whether they are, <laughs> they are enjoying SWP, the fact that they don't have the TIN, they don't, the fact that they are not paying taxes, they are illegal. So we cannot paint a, a, a different picture here saying because they are they have SWP, they are legal. Tama ba, DEPCOM? <coughs> so in so far as the uh, regulating... The I'm only asking, they are not paying taxes, they don't have TIN, then they are illegal. Is so, that yes or no? Sir, we... we if That's they're only not my paying question. The, they are not paying taxes. If the company is not paying the taxes, not properly withholding the, yes. the, the taxes from the salaries of the employees, that then... Then they're illegal. So the 6,678 are illegal. Okay, no. Kaya nga, there may be more. Hindi lang kasi naglimit lang tayo sa 6,600 na, na huli sa inspection. But during the inspection... Were you only looking for AEP or you were also looking for SWP? Pag may pinalabas na SWP, you will not consider him the person uh, working without permit? Your Honor, when we conduct the inspection, we only con uh, determine whether they are with AEPs, Your Honor. AEPs? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Kasi ang, ang point ko, kasi pwede kasing those na with SWP na hindi nakagip nitong inspection, they may also not have tin. Ganun din. So same, same. So it's not it's not only the six thousand. So I need there should be uh, uh, I believe that there should be a deeper investigation here on how we can project the number of foreign nationals working in Pogos 
na who are able to avoid or evade paying taxes. Kasi are we also sure na kung may AEP siya, automatic ba na may TIN siya? Tapos kahit may TIN siya, automatic ba na nagbabayad din ng taxes? Iba, kasi di ba meron din may TIN na tax evader, hindi pa ba attorney di? Just for the record, tell us di ba? Oh, tama? Uh, yes, sir. Di ba? <laughs> Para, yes, sir. Oh. So, uh, so, okay, ganito, ganito. Para to help me understand. Pag may AEP, ito klaro na na pag may SWP, pwedeng walang TIN. Pero pag may AEP ba, automatic ba na obligation ni AEP holder to get a TIN? Yes, Your Honor. Before we will issue an AEP, the applicant must show us the TIN. Yes, Your Honor. Una, Una si TIN. Okay. Okay. Una si TIN. I think you AEP is a, is a uh, armas natin to ensure una that the, the, the work na gagawin nitong foreign national ay hindi kayang gampanan ng isang Pilipino. Pero hindi ba rin, uh, from the point of view of the BIR naman, they are now issuing a tax identification number to a foreigner who does not even have a work permit? Di ba? Ganun na niyari. Balik, kasi TIN is the requirement for AEP. So therefore, when he is applying for a TIN, wala siya mapakitang work permit. Uh, you're correct, Your Honor. In fact, we before it was a requirement that they should at least present an AEP. But to accommodate the issuance of TIN to this Pogo foreign nationals, we dispense of the of the said requirement, sir. So which is which? I think uh, Senator Koch is asking which is which. Mauuna ba yung TIN o mauuna yung AEP? Uh, sir, under the current setup, the TIN would be issued first. Because it has become the prerequisite uh, yes, to sir. apply for AEPs. Now, I think it's important yung AEPs, eh, and, and sec Senator Coco is uh, correct. Mahalaga yung issuance ng AEP. AEP. Uh, remember, in, in the past hearings natin, yung issuance ng AEPs versus the SWPs, lagi na lang ang taas ng SWPs. Kasi, we ask Paano ba yung process ng pagbibigay ng special working permits? Hanggang sa nadiskubre natin, tumawag tayo mismo doon sa isang satellite office sa SM Aura, sabi, one week ang SWP, less than a week. Pero kung gusto mo ng one hour, magbabayad ka lang ng liman libo. Sa telepono ho ito, bayad ka ng liman libo, walang resibo, makukuha mo yun ng hour, yung SWP. And we were able to report this to uh, uh, Commissioner Ramorende and... Uh, to his uh, uh, credit na, na pasara po yun, kaagad nakasuhan yung mga taong uh, involved, pati security guard. I was told na sangkot dun sa mafia dun sa loob. But anyway, inayos ho natin yan. Si Senator Coco and I made sure that uh, when we passed the budget last year, we, we, we had this uh, provision in the budget to ensure that Dole would be on top of things, issuing uh, uh, AEPs because you have the capacity to vet no whether or not uh, no Filipino is able capable and uh, willing to do the job now if you look at the labor market test which tayo lahat gusto natin tong uh, LMT eh, para masigurong protektado yung mga kababayan natin secretary if i look at the AEPs right now um there's a 188.7% increase in the issue ones of AEPs. And binanggit niyo po kanina yung 100 uh, where is that? 123,056 sa Pogo industry lang po. So, ito ho medyo malaki ho ito, secretary, and I think uh, we wanted to find out ano ba yung Paano ba to yung, yung sa marami sa atin hindi naintindihan yung labor market testing. Paano po ba kinokonduct ito bago bigyan ng uh, ng AEPs, no? Kasi uh, I think for so long we have been talking about yes, if this particular job cannot be performed by a Filipino, that's the only time, no? Walang able, willing and capable. But how do we do this? Papa Paano ba ito? Kasi minsan may, may meron hong nagsabi sa akin na isang Pilipino, sanay magmandarin, sanay magsalita. Sabi niya, hindi ko naman alam na 
na mayroong nangangailangan ganyang uh, uh, trabaho, no? Secretary? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, in fact, if you recall, in my closing statement, humingi kami ng tulong. Dahil before we could issue the AAP, we have to determine whether there will be no Filipinos who will be deprived of the work. And to do that, we have to publish the name of the applicants, Your Honor. Dito may gastos, Your Honor. Eh. Oh, where do we get the funds for that? Eh, kami so sa right now, you only what? Uh, nilalathala lang sa isang pahayagan, ganon? Yes, Your Honor. This is a 15-day publication requirement, Your Honor. If after 15 days after the publication, walang sumiput na Pilipino sabihin na kaya namin yan, gusto namin yan, then we will issue the AP, Your Honor. So that's the only thing, Secretary. That, that, that's the only thing that uh, we can do right now. Just uh, that's why, Your Honor. Uh, before our closing state, I was about to mention that, in our honor, we have the the power to issue the alien em employment permit. But if there are foreign nationals doing work without AAPs, there is nothing we can do, Your Honor. That's why I was about to make a statement that to give the Department of Labor enough teeth to be able to enforce the requirement that you cannot do a work here. If you are a foreign national, you cannot work here without an AAP. Otherwise, we can close your operation. Pero wala kami ganyan, Your Honor. The only thing that we can do is prepare to, to BI. And it's Bill BI who will do the, ano. Uh, At, maganda po yung uh, insight na binigay niyo sa amin. So, for example, sir, you had six, sa mata there were 6,678 foreign nationals working without permit. After study ng BI, uh, sabi nila, conclusion nila, only 52 of those 6,000 were really illegal. Let us assume, assume lang, ha, na yung 52 na yon, that finally determined to be illegal, were all working in one company, one entity. Okay. Are you still powerless to sanction that company which employed the 52 illegals? Yes, Your Honor. We are powerless. You cannot invoke your, ano, uh, your AEPs na in-issue sa kanila? But they're the, that what they're working without the AEPs, Your Honor. So there's... Pwede, meron pa silang 500 other employees with AEPs. So, hindi maapektuhan yun, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. But the, 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 the right of that company to continue doing its business, hindi maapektuhan because naka, nag, consciously nag-employ siya ng subs, substantial number of uh, illegal workers? Wala yes, Your Honor. Uh, they, they can continue working. We can only remind them that you are uh, yeah. allowing yeah. workers yeah. without AEPs to work in your company. Lang, Secretary, no? I think it's, it's important to look at these figures because it appears that Dolly is now giving AEPs like candies. Eh. Bigla na hong nag-spike ng ganito kataas. So we just wanted to uh, 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 remind the Dolly no? about your, 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 your process. Yes, uh, before sir. I forget this. So, balik ako dun sa process for ano. There's a foreign national. Before he can get an AEP, which will allow him to work in the Philippines, must get a TIN. What is the visa of that foreign national applying for a TIN before the BIF? Ano visa hawak niya? Sir, at that time, it would be possible tourist. Most likely tourist. Tourist. Naman, tourist. So, si tourist, si tourist, because tourist visa siya eh. Is now getting a tax identification number, and then BIR is giving the tourist a tax identification number. Ganun ba yun? Uh, sir, um, the, the, uh, we are issuing the TIN based on the EO 98. It's not an employee's TIN. Later on, when they get the AEP, the TIN will be converted to an employee's <laughs> TIN. Initially, sir, it's an e on Executive Order 9018. Mm. Uh, Which is that? Uh, based on that uh, EO that was issued by President Estrada, uh, any person dealing with the government has to secure a TIN. 
Okay. So uh, just like before, sir, it was required when you get to get uh, when you're applying for a license, but now it's no longer required. Okay. Yeah. Do, are we are we always assuming that a tourist will deal with the government? Uh, sir, in in addition, sir, the one of the requirements we we were asking from the foreign nationals, it's a copy of the employment contract. Ah, so may contract na siya, although wala pa siyang permit. Okay, so talagang nachichicken and egg tayo rito, Secretary, ha? kasi uh, parang ginajustify na lang natin sa sarili natin. Na <laughs> uh, so he has, a, he has a, an employment contract given to him in advance, yet he comes here as a tourist, Diba? Ganun yan. And shows the contract to get a TIN and then shows the TIN together with uh, other documents to get the employment, uh, alien employment permit. Ganun po. Yes, sir. Well, anyway, we will, we will study the flow of the, uh, the, of the uh, system kasi parang, oo, oh, oh, parang... That's why nakakapasok eh. Kaya nga, yung mga fugitives. Visa, kasi ako, I don't think so kung pumunta ako sa ibang bansa na may tourist visa ako. Uh, ah, but are you sure na all those who got TIN meron talagang contract? Walang, wala doon na nakakuha ng TIN na, na hindi nagpakita ng contract? Uh, uh, yes, sir. That, that is a requirement. Okay. So, at, so may contract. So, so, kung may contract na siya, how come he applied for a visa, tourist visa kaya? when that should have been from the ang assumption natin dyan, from the very start when he flew when he left his country of origin to to come here hawak na niya si employment contract tama po ba yun? tama ba ang assumption niya Panyero? Uh, di ba? most I, like I'm di ba? not sure your honor but uh, I think that uh, yeah so it's supposed to be it, Senator Coco after getting the alien employment permits he or she would have to secure a working visa because a working v AEP is a requirement before you can be issued a working visa. So are they doing that? Uh, uh, That's why we'll ask the, the, the question to, so, to Dole. So in effect, dalawang visa si, ano, si, si, alien, si, si legal alien worker in the Philippines who came here with, uh, by virtue of a tourist visa we we'll have to secure another kind of visa, working visa. Uh, sir, if an alien comes in by virtue of, a, uh, on the basis of a uh, tourist visa, mm. then once in the country, he is hired by a local company to mm. work here. Mm. Then he has to apply for a conversion of uh, status mm. from a tourist visa to a working visa. Okay. And, oh, but sorry. before you get a working visa, you have to go to the Department of Labor to get an alien employment permit. AAP. Yes, sir. Pero kaya nga, yung scenario na yan is for the lucky tourist, di ba, who got, who, got, who got work, all of a sudden work in the, while he was in the Philippines. Hindi yung, for a person Most who of already, all the workers secured, are tourists, who already secured the work before coming here. Yan na, yan yung point eh. Ganito ba yan eh. Ano ba yung scenario na na-envision dun sa proseso na yun? There is a tourist who is here, and he's, oh, all of a sudden, within the period na legal siya as a tourist, oh, I, I'm, a company wants to hire me. Then that's the procedure to do, tama? Convert, convert it to working visa. Tama mo ba yun? Uh, sir, first of all, uh, the tourist visa presupposes that the alien comes here for tourism, Correct. for business, and for health reasons. Mm. But uh, once he's here and he's hired by a local company, mm. then he applies for a work visa. Correct. But the contract would the contract effectivity would be from the time maybe he's, he's issued a alien employment permit by the Department of Labor. Mm. So yun yun, kasi yun yung normal situation yun, na a tourist hits the jackpot, he's employed in the Philippines. Pero what if a person who wants to come to the Philippines in order to work Oh, and he gets a tourist visa? Tam ba yun? Uh, no, no, sir. Under the new guidelines signed by the interagency task force, there's another option wherein uh, any person outside the country interested to work here, intends to work here, uh, he can go to the consular post or embassy in, uh, in, in his uh, port of origin and apply for a work visa there. Mm. But the work visa 
has to be uh, for the application has to be forwarded to the Bureau of Immigration for approval. Mm -hmm. Then after upon approval, it has to be returned back to the consular post for the issuance of the work visa. Okay. Then after getting uh, the work visa, the 9G visa, then he can come in. Okay, then within so seven days, he has to register with the Bureau of Immigration. So that person comes in with a working visa? That's correct, okay. sir. So That's bakit correct. nga pagdating sa POGO workers, karamihan sa kanila, let us say, as a, as a rule, turista ang dating. How come nga ganun ang nangyari? How come nabaliktad ang, ang proseso? Sorry. Uh, uh, Ade, teka, yo, yo, depo, yo. Depo. Tapos turista pa, na may hawak na na employment contract kasi ginagamit to show to the BIR to get a TIN. So, so ang gusto ko sabihin, from the very start, bago pa siya lumipad, alam ko na na I'm going to work in Manila and I will now get a tourist visa. Eh, meron parang, parang hindi, ano, eh, something is wrong there, hindi siya tugma eh. No? So, uh, Your Honor, it has been the practice that uh, they, they come in as tourists then convert to working visa. Uh, in my experience, I, I haven't ex encountered any application done abroad, getting a working visa and getting in the country using a work visa. You outline the outline that uh, the procedure that you outlined earlier, which is the correct, correct procedure. So how come we are not requiring that that procedure be the one followed? Uh, it's being allowed now um, since uh, effectivity of the joint uh, the joint memorandum circular i think uh, effective november november 2019 2019 so anybody so, who intends to work here can apply for a work visa in our consular post abroad and uh, it can be issued a work visa there upon approval by the board of commissioners here uh, in the country but uh, I think uh, because the, the procedure is circuitous uh, and uh, re uh, so we can takes actually, time um, for, for practicality purposes. We can actually conduct an experiment on mga next uh, applicants for TIN. Tignan na, ito kasi ano na, 2020 na, February na. So let's say sa March, tignan natin yung mga applicants for TIN. Tignan ang visa. Kung tourist pa ba o working na. O, kung working na, Tama na, sinasabi ni Deputy Commissioner na nag-in-effect na yung new procedure since November 2019. Pero pag still tourist, ini-ignore lang. Balik tayo sa dating ginagawa. Yes, sir. We, we can do that, sir. Uh, at this juncture, let me uh, recognize Senator uh, Amy Margos, who is also uh, an author of a resolution regarding uh, this particular issue. Senator Amy. Yes, thank you very much to uh, Chairman Joel as well as uh, um, Senator Coco. Um, yes, I filed the Senate Resolution 67 for Joel's committee to investigate at pinigyan tayo ng pagkakataon na maimbestiga rin ito. And uh, I also have with me the, the other bill filed. Um, uh, also a resolution um, with regard to the uh, proliferation of illegal aliens, that's Senate Resolution 1567, and the amendments to the uh, immigration law, uh, Senate Bill 885. So, andun na yung mga provisions na sana uh, mabigyan natin ng pansin at tunay na visa ang ating batas. So, Secretary Bellio, Deputy Commissioner, to all of you, thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Aimee, and let me apologize. I didn't, uh, the staff failed to mention that uh, it is part of the agenda. It's actually part of the agenda in uh, today's uh, hearing. Thank you very much. Let's let's go back, uh, Secretary Bellio, dun sa labor market test. No? Siguro if we can look at the LMT doon sa Pogo industry, uh, siguro baka dapat... Uh, Dapat may ibang paraan because are we using the same uh, labor market test in the pogo industry and in, for example in manufacturing industry is it the same? Your Honor, I, uh, as I explained er earlier, before we can issue an APP, we have to go to the notion of publishing the names of the applicants, and then we also have in our website and other public places where we publish the names of the applicants. Ito lang nagagawa lang namin to ensure 
that the applicant will not perform a service here that can be done by a Filipino. Uh, I think, sir, yun nga, yung uh, suggestion lang, baka dapat iba yung ginagamit. Or are we using the same uh, labor market as to all industries? Universal po ba yan? Or, uh, because this is a peculiar uh, industry. Uh, we are the same. We use the same hmm. labor market. The same. Uh, perhaps we can look into it, sir. Baka dapat medyo iba. And, and, and in the past, and in your uh, uh, inspections na you conducted, Yung mga AEPs, kayo pa ba nagpa-follow up? Because as we made mention a while ago, Senator Coco stressed uh, uh, very clearly, yung pagkatapos ng AEPs, yung na-inspect ninyo, il, ano yung time frame na inaasahan nyo na magkakaroon naman sila ng uh, working visa? Kasi kung wala silang working visa, ano ho bang ibig sabihin nun? Hindi sila pwede pa rin magtrabaho, hindi ho ba? Yes, you know, they cannot, I mean... Uh, they cannot work in uh, this Pogo base establishment. Okay, if the, you, you inspected 123,056 in the Pogo industry in, la, in last year. So, ilan po dito, would you know, or ang um, BI Huba would know from the 123,056, uh, ilan yung kumuha ng uh, uh, visa, itong 9G, if I'm not mistaken? Your Honor, uh, Hindi na po kayo doon. Under the joint uh, circular, Your Honor, a foreigner who comes in and work, Your Honor, can do, has two options. One is he can go get already a working visa before he comes in. But he can also come in with a tourist visa and then have it converted by the Bureau of Immigration, Your Honor. What, what I'm saying, sir, is yung AEPs, niyo ba, nag-issue kayo ng AEPs, sino ho ang... mga ngalaga na masiguro na makakakuha sila ng 9G. Kasi kung hindi sila kumuha ng working visa, baliwala din po ito, di ba? Is that a correct statement? Yes, Your Honor. They cannot, uh, no. they cannot, they cannot get work. An they cannot get an AEP from us. No, they, no, they got an AEP na ho. You yes. issued AEP. May AEP na sila. It is not enough for this uh, particular foreigner to work. Because yung AEP kailangan pang... ng work visa. Yes, Your Honor. Right? Ngayon, ang tanong ko po, dun sa 123,000 na na-issuehan ng AEPs, lahat po ba sila nabigyan na ng, uh, ng visa? visa? Ng work visa? Meron po bang nagmo-monitor dito? Kayo po ba yung nagmo-monitor or the Bureau of Immigration? That is one of our uh, responsibilities, Your Honor. To sweet to it that those we issued AEP will eventually get their working visa from the I. So do we have the data now? Uh, is it available? How many of the uh, AEPs that you have issued applied for a uh, working visa? At lahat naman po sila? Na, wala na ho ba yun? Smooth na po ba yun? Pagka, pagka nakakuha na ng AEPs sa uh, DEPCOM? Our records will show your honor that those issued AEPs, seven of those issued AEPs, 77,588 uh, uh, applied for a working visa, Your Honor. Obtain a working visa from BI. Out of 123,000? Yes, Your Honor. So that's what I'm saying, uh, sir. So, yung, lal, yung, yung, yung 123 po yung AEPs, pero 77,588 lang yung nag-apply ng visa. So, ibig sabihin, yung iba probably did not push through of working or Tumigil na rin sila. Tumigil na sila, nagsawa na sila. Pwede naman eh. Dami namang illegal nagtatrabaho eh. Yes, you're wrong. That, that's, that's my only point that I'd like to, to, to raise. Uh, and if, if it is the Department of Labor and Employment that would, would, would uh, look into this, sana ho, matignan din po natin. Because it's still glaring. The, the, the figures are, are, are on the screen right now. Uh, let, let's let's go to Pagor, uh, sir. Uh, at present, what is the share of Filipino workers in the total number of workers employed in uh, Pogo licenses? Siguro, bigyan nyo lang po muna kami, sir, nung universe. Ilan ho ba yung workers sa Pogo na nilisensyahan? Uh, kasama na po yung service providers. Ilan po yung workers doon? At ilan po doon sa total number of workers ang mga Pilipino? You have the floor, sir. 
Your Honor, good afternoon, honorable members of the committee. Uh, sir, based on uh, December 2019 data, uh, the total number of workers are 118,000. 100. 118,239. That's the total number of uh, FOGO workers. And uh, the foreign workers uh, amount to 97,823, sir. Uh, 283, sorry. Uh, 97,283. And uh, the remaining are 20,956. 23,956, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and what kinds of uh, jobs do Filipino workers in Pogo related establishments uh, fill? Do we have that? Sir, usually they are either in the uh, live studio uh, recording and uh, in the back office, or, uh, finance, uh, that type of uh, job description, sir. In, in our data, sir, uh, which is also weird, no? it, it's been talking about all these uh, figures. Uh, for example, if you look at the foreign workers at... Uh, What's this? Uh, Great Empire Gaming and Amusement Corporation. Can we show that, uh, please? This is just one um, Pogo. Uh, Gegak. Great Empire Gaming and Amusement Corporation. From Pagcor, uh, Pagcor's data, please correct us uh, if we're wrong. Yes, sir. From Pagcor's data, it's 3,086. We asked the interagency task force, it's 8,610. So, meron na kagad difference of 5,524. Sa new Oriental Club, 88 Corporation, 15,108 ang nakalista sa Pagcor. Sa interagency task force, 23,156 or a difference of 8,048. And I could go on and on, no? Uh, may, may we know uh, if you guys are talking? <laughs> uh, I mean, what's the explanation behind these uh, figures? Would you uh, uh, stand by your figures, sir? It's uh, Pagor figures. Uh, uh, sir, initially, the I think the issue was that uh, we were basing our figures on the declarations of the of the pogos, and these were the num the numbers that were not declared by the. By you the mean pogos. to say you already admit that this is not being declared by this pogo company? Yes, sir. That's so what happens if that's the case? For example, dun sa ayun nga eh, uh, I, I just can't. I, uh, see, Senator Ko is asking why why are they hiding? The figures, sir. Uh, as of now, we already have one case where the under declaration was uh, sanctioned. Usually, uh, our sanctions are uh, uh, done through demerits, and uh, for example, if twenty demerits would probably amount to uh, twenty thousand, one million pesos, about twenty thousand U.S. dollars. So we're trying just to just one million, sir, per demerit. Per demerit. Yes, uh, yes, sir. What about that, that, that particular company na, na more than one point something billion yung uh, siguro let's, 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 let's talk about the, the same uh, example that uh, Secretary Bello mentioned a while ago. Yes, sir. Uh, Nag-inspect sila ng isang licensed uh, pagcore licensed Pogo and Nakita nila, 6,600 uh, plus yung mga illegal uh, workers. Anong, anong sanction nito? Kasi, if I'm not mistaken, 3 out of 4 na in-inspect ay nag-operate na ngayon. In fact, yung isa, nagbayad na ng 1.2 billion pesos. And that's why uh, hindi na po tayo nagulat nung sinabi ni Secretary Dominguez that we're looking at 2.5 to 3 billion pesos a month na hindi binabayad na withholding tax pa lang ho ito. Wala pa ho yung VAT, wala pa yung corporation tax. 
etc. Am I correct? So what 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 do you do about it? Ah, yung pagkor. Sir, we uh, we are uh, on we are waiting or we wait for correspondence or notice from Dole. And upon receipt of the the report, you we, have we, to wait for Dole. We uh, issue the sanction. Official uh, report. Nagreport. Are they expected to? Are you expected uh, to report to Pagor? Did you did you do that? Yes. Uh, after the inspection, sir, the regional director of Dole will communicate to. Pagcor about some violations, and uh, in fact, we we urge Pagcor to sanction these uh, violators, these companies. They, as in the secretary, will have some power done. Pero pero ang sanctions, if the sanctions only one million, uh, sir, yung yung isang huli one point two billion kagad nagbayad hu kagad para makaoperate. Eh. Uh, perhaps we should look into this. Uh, we talk about sanctions, but let's let's continue talking about the 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 jobs being created here in in, in our country. I think, ah, uh, dun sa binanggit niyo pong figures, one eighteen versus twenty. It's, that's about less than twenty percent. So in every ten, about two, ang uh, nakikreate na trabaho para sa mga Pilipino. Is that a correct uh, uh, figure statement, uh, sir? Yes, sir. Approximately around around seventeen point seven to seventy two percent, as per our figures. Uh, do all uh, pogo related establishments hire uh, Filipino workers? Um, I I I believe so, sir. Yes, the answer is yes. yes if you sir. look at these uh, figures that uh, I got, um, example, Big Emperor Technology Corporation, Jindungian. Business Support Incorporated, Great Empire Gaming and Amusement Corporation, they 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 hire or they have at least three thousand, three thousand two hundred, three thousand four hundred foreign workers, sir. But they have zero Filipino workers. Walapong uh, Pinoy workers dito sa tatlo na ito. I, I'm just wondering, sir, because there was an instance I think last. Congress when we had a hearing on the uh, that particular gaming company in in Clark Bayon, sa Clark, uh, uh, next games no, next game, Pagcor even mentioned a particular provision. What's that provision? Yeah, yung sa special class of BPOs. I'm sorry, yung special class of BPOs. Uh, ang, Ang 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 meron may, nilabas ang pagor na 90% they are uh, they are required to hire Filipino workers if I'm not mistaken. So I just I'm just wondering, meron po bang mga ganitong uh, uh, moves or anything that because this is something that we should look into out of the 3400 zero, 3226 zero, 3086 zero Filipino workers. Yes, sir. Uh, we have already addressed the initial uh, uh, flaw in the in the memo, sir, that we sent, which uh, required them to report only the foreign workers. So there was a there was a mix-up, sir, regarding the memo. But however, we have addressed it, and now we require them to report both foreign and. These local. figures came from Pagcor, sir. So meaning yes, sir, to as say. declared by the. Pogo. Mali yung sinabmit lang. So, meaning meron, most likely meron ding Filipino workers dyan. Yes, sir. Because in other companies, like for instance, yung Oriental Game, yung Most Success, uh, I mean, yung Defund Global, meron po, no? But anyway, let's let's continue talking about the, the, the employees. In, in the last uh, uh, hearings that we conducted, we, we noticed yung um, gaming employment licenses being issued by Pagor and we we, we commend Pagor for doing that in in the in the uh, casino being supervised by Pagor yes. but unfortunately we were surprised that it's not being implemented in Pogo licenses or Pogo service providers what what what's the rationale behind this sir uh, actually we are uh, implementing the OGEL, the Offshore Gaming Employment License. Just uh, now? 
Yeah. As of um, when did you start implementing? As of November, sir. And uh, admittedly, sir, the rollout has not is not yet 100%, but we expect the rollout to be completed within the year, hopefully within the first half of the year. Can we have a target date for that? Uh, uh, because I think uh, this is very important. Yes, because sir, we agree. Sir. Every time nagkakaroon ng inspection, sasabihin, uh, pogo workers sila, pero at may lisensya ng PAGCOR, yung pala hindi, hindi, hindi tama. No? And Apo. what happens if we find out na wala silang permits o yung binigyan nyo ng lisensya, hindi o nag-hire ng illegal workers? Sir, there are three steps. Uh, we sanction, then there's cessation, and then there's termination. Uh, so, we, we of course, we start with the sanction. So, parang three, three strikes, sir. But if you're talking about fugitives, for example, if you look at the data right now, there are 700 plus fugitives working in legal Pogo uh, companies na may long, mayroong legal na lisensya mula sa PAGCOR. What, what happens? Do you go straight to number three? Or you still yes, go for, first from sanction to... No, sir. We, 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 there is actually a case where we went straight into cancellation. Okay. That's good to hear. Now, what is the rash... Sir. Let's talk about the OGEL, itong uh, offshore gaming uh, employment license. What is the rationale for requiring OGELs in only three types of POGO service providers? Kasi tatlo lang daw po ito. Um, according to this uh, data that we got, uh, it's rec only required for customer relations service provider, gaming software platform providers, and live studio and streaming uh, provider. What's the rationale behind this? Sir, I, I believe the rationale is that uh, the, the license is supposed to be issued to uh, uh, juridical entities which are engaged directly in uh, gaming. So the rest are, do not require, you do not require them to? Yes, sir. there are IT services that are not uh, directly uh, related to gaming. And for you to issue the uh, gaming employment license, you need, uh, it is a prerequisite for you to look for AEPs from Dole or a valid working visa from... Yes, sir, we've right? added, we have added the requirement of the TIN number. That is now being uh, implemented. Yes, sir. We but we not full, in full. Yes, sir. To, to be truthful, uh, mabagal po yung makina namin eh. And we, 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 we are also subjected to the same rigors of the procurement law. So, the, it means yung, yung sa makina nakadepende, sir? Uh, yes, sir. But we, we, the chairman has addressed it in our recent ESCOM. Excom. I think we are... Uh, uh, you know, I don't uh, get it. Why, why are we dependent on the machine to, to issue this... Uh, Gaming employment uh, license. May chine check po ba? Na? No, so we issue IDs. Oh, just the ID. The, the just ID. the ID. Just I think we, we can go away with it. A, a simple license, a, a paper will do. So, hindi ko alam kung ano yung, yung, yung machine, no? Parang. Anyway, uh, what is the overall policy of PAGCOR in issuing uh, GELs? Do you adhere to the state policy still? And uh, you still look into the constitutional provision ng Article 12, Section 12 na kung ito ba ay pwedeng gampanan ng isang Pilipino, uh, dapat hindi ibigay sa foreigner? Meron po bang ganong polisiya? Well, sir, we, uh, of course, we give due regard to the probative value of the AEP that it's given to us that presumably that all the labor market tests have been conducted regularly. Uh, tapos, sir, on our end so you also, also rely on the AEPs? Uh, yes, sir, because wow. yun po yung pinakamatibay as far as we're concerned. But, uh, sir, uh, we took a further step. Uh, we are initiating seminars, hopefully to sort of uh, teach them about the culture before they start to work here, sir. Okay, thank you. So, uh, the VP Bondok of Pagor, so, Naklaro na natin that when there is an entity, a POGO entity, which has been hiring repeatedly illegal workers, the power to discipline is with PAGCOR? Yes, sir, with regard to sanction, cessation, and uh, cancellation. Yeah, all the way to cancellation. So, yun naman ang pinaka-valuable sa kanya, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, ito po, meron lang ako hindi, hindi naintindihan, eh. Uh, sabi ninyo, merong... You have issued 60 POGO licenses. Yes, sir. 
50 doon foreign based and 10 Philippine based. Ano ibig sabihin? Yes, an an tama po ba yan? 50 foreign based and yes, sir. 10 Philippine. Yes, with regard to when the... you say Philippine based located in the Philippines yung 10. Yung 50 saan located? Sir, um I think yung 10 meaning to say nakaregistro sa Securities and Exchange Commission. Sir, registration. Yan lang ang ibig sabihin. Yung ah, so effective. foreign companies yung yes, 50. Ah. Citizenship and uh, registration. Sorry, at, at uh, Panyero Attorney Certeza, hindi ko na hindi, as a lawyer, hindi ko na hindi foreign base. Eh. So foreign, for incorporated, uh, foreign incorporated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, for so, taxation and all that. Ah, may difference uh, in, the, in their taxation treatment? Meron ba difference? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yung, yung mga sito sa taxation. Hindi, but operations niyan dito, right? Uh, Kunyari yung, yung 50 foreign corporations with POGO licenses are doing business in the Philippines. Uh, they uh, are operating here. They are hiring people to work. Sir, that's actually the crux of the issue. They operate there, but they uh, avail of the services of uh, local service providers. And why, are they, yes. why do they need license from POGCOR if they don't operate you know, here? You're the next question. To, in order to work with the uh, local service providers, sir. The operation is here. They're, they're, it's the, the operations. So here. they're not here. Actually, the, the there is a corporate entity who is not, which is not here, yes, but operations are here. So how come those operating are not the POG, are not considered the POGO? So the the betting and the payouts are done. Yeah. Off, the you know, and they, you know, but the know, betting, sir, the betting and the payouts are done elsewhere. Uh, the service providers here provide. Uh, IT, the, the components of the game, sir. We we admit of the of the grayness of the matter, sir. However, with regard to the operation, with the strict uh, construction of the operation, parang the current interpretation is it's offshore. The, with regard to accepting bets and the payout, sir. But these uh, co foreign corporations are paying you license fees, parang ganon. License fees, regulatory fees. Sir. Regulatory fees before because before you allow them to to uh, tap the services of the service provider. Opo, sir. Ganun yun. Uh, so, may difference, no? May meron bang difference in the... How about the Philippine-based or the Philippine-organized corporation with POGO license? May difference sila sa fees and permits being paid compared to the foreign corporation? Sir, sa bayad, I, I, wala yatang difference. I don't think there's a difference. Hmm. Okay, so it's good that they're recognizing our jurisdiction and, pay, and paying us. Yes, sir. <laughs> but yeah, so workers, yeah, so workers yeah, tayo. But yes, sir. ang workers nila, if ever may workers sila, it's there in the, where they are. No? But yes, sir. Yung, yung accredited service provider, no worker, ang ating concern. That who, yes, sir. Who are paying their taxes anyway? Who are also most likely foreigners. Tama pa ba yan? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes di ba? Oo. Oh. So, kasi, hindi ba, tika mo na, ang justification kasi sa POGO na foreign national is because you will be communicating with the foreign national. Di ba? Parang gano'n. Kasi bawal yes. ang bets ng Pilipinos, di ba? Yes. Foreign national sa magbibet. So, yes, there's communication between an employee of a POGO with a foreign national. Most likely, Mandarin. Masalita. Usually, sir. Okay. Yung accredited service provider, gano'n din ba ang justification that they, they, they are also talking to foreign nationals? Sir, actually, sila po yung nakikipag-usap talaga sa ano. Yung, okay, so ibig sabihin nun, na-outsource pa ni Pogo ang yung critical service na yun? Na-outsource pa niya? Hindi siya integral part ng business niya? Kasi ang employer, ang, ang employer ni, okay, ang employer ni foreign employee talking to this foreign national, which is necessary for the gaming to continue, Ang employer niya is the accredited service provider. It's not the POGO. Yes, sir. Oh, yun ang problema mo. Iba na naman ang problema mo. Yun na naman. Oh. So, we are, we are back to employer-employee relationship. And, the, and that's why this is uh, really a complicated industry. It's a, 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 a different animal, so to speak. And that's why if you look at the, for example, the, uh, uh, when you talk about the, uh, collecting uh, right taxes iba no uh, and what we are talking about is uh, kanina is uh, just withholding tax 
we have not yet uh, touched on the uh, value added tax we have not yet uh, uh, touched on the uh, uh, corporate tax etc yes Senator kasi from the business point of view ko ako si accredited service provider bakit hindi ko na lang ginawa ako na mismo si Pogo may di pa, ano ba sana mas malaking kita as Pogo or as accredited service provider sir uh, definitely as Pogo okay okay and Kasi... then if i provide all of the all of the services all of the activities being done by Pogo kung ako yung may-ari ng accredited service provider but di ko na lang ginawang Pogo ito para akin na yung kita unless unless meron din akong Pogo ganun ba yun dini divide dini divide ba ni Si Pogo owner ba? Isa rin ba owner ni accredited service provider? Ganun ba? I, I think, uh, if, if I may, no, I think mas malaki ang capital ng uh, Pogo licensees. Because if you are a service provider, accredited service provider, you, you, you can uh, 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 offer your services to all these Pogo licensees. Eh. So there's no such thing na isa lang yung pwede mong pagsilbihan dyan. So lahat ng Pogo licensees pwede mong... Uh, pagsilbihan. Tsaka sir, divided po yung components kasi nung, nung operation. All of them parang hindi kayang gampanan basta-basta ng isa. Parang I think it's specialized. Every step of the way, iba-iba yung service uh, provider. If we can ask that... Magkakano ba lisensya niyan? 200,000 US dollars po yung for e-casino. Sa foreign base? Yeah, yes ma'am. Filipino uh, base? Pa pareho lang po, 200,000. Accredited service provider. Sir, ma'am, iba-iba po. Uh, Hindi, basic. 150,000. Around 150 on the average. 150,000 US, US, US dollars, ma'am. So, there's not a big difference between the accredited service provider and the POGO license? Uh, with 50,000 US dollars lang? Uh, they have regulatory fees. Uh, they pay us... Uh, um, who pays the regulatory fees? The POGO? Device service providers, yes. If uh, she's uh, more updated on the fees? Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, it, it's all right, ma'am. They, they pay 2%. Two, two Who does? Uh, the POGO or the accredited service provider? The Who POGO. pays the 2% regulatory fee? The POGO, ma'am. The POGO. Uh, magkano yan buwan-buwan? O sabihin natin siyang taon? Hmm. Kasi sabi niya, malaki daw yan eh. Mas per hour data. The income from offshore gaming operations as of 2019 was... 2% gross of uh, income? Ganun ba yun? Laki nun. Gross of... Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. 2% of gross? Revenues. Gross gaming revenue, ma'am. Uh, total bets, less payouts. So how much was it? The total gross gaming revenues? 3 billion. Of all POGOs lang to, ha? All POGOs uh, licenses yes, sir. in 2019? Yes, sir. 3 billion, 146 million, 899 Yan ang pesos. Uh, yan na yung 2% o yan yung gross? This is the gross, ma'am. Kanino? I, uh, no, this, sorry, sorry, ma'am. This is what Pagcor collected, ma'am. From uh, whom? From the Pogos, ma'am. In, in... All the Pogos together? Yes, ma'am. Ang kinita lang, ganun kalit? Parang hindi ako maniwala. Bil bil 3 billion, ma'am. 3 billion, 146 million, 899-818.08. Parang payat yata, chair. I agree. I, I totally agree. Can, 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 we, can, we, can we break down the figures? How much was the gross gaming revenues of all Pogo licenses in 2019? Gross gaming revenues. Uh, Ma'am, uh, sir, with regard to the figures. It's, that it's, is 2%. They, they collect 2% every month eh, so, of the gross gaming revenues. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, Everyone. what's the total in 2019 of the gross gaming revenues collected by Pagcor? Is that the 3 billion already? Yes, sir, it's in dollars. 3 billion, 347. 3 billion dollars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, that's dollars. about 150 billion. Uh, oh, yeah. 
Okay, so 150 billion. So, so yung 3 billion pesos, yung 3 billion pesos. It's not pesos. Dollars ba yun o pesos? Dollars, dollars ma'am. Parang it's nalulugi it. tayo nito. So, <laughs> I think the dollars, it's the total gross gaming revenue po in dollars. Okay, total gross gaming revenue in, in dollars. dollars. That's what's dollars. Three billion been dollars. collected. 3.347, uh, 3347, 399,789.09. Billion dollars. That's billion the total. Dollars. Total annual? Total annual yan, for 2019, this yes. Is, this is 2019 as per our chart. Now, this is the question. How do you know? How do you know that you are collecting the right gross gaming uh, revenue? Because you, you said you're collecting monthly regulatory fee uh, equivalent to uh, 2%. Paano niyo po nasusukat itong numero na ito that you expect to collect? Yes, sir. We've already availed of the services of a third-party auditor um, who is in turn audited by Co, of course. And sila po, we refer to we refer to them. Globe. Um, you just Global. refer to to them. Uh, sino itong uh, auditing firm na to? They 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 were uh, the winning bidders of our uh, of the procurement uh, uh, process. Ano nga ba pangalan? Global Com RCI. Global Com RCI. The third party auditors. So Global Com. Uh, how much are you paying Global Com for this? Ten, that is 10% of the 2%. Give me the numbers. I'm not so uh, good yes, in sir. math. Sorry, sir. <laughs> this is for what? For 2019. Pwede kaya ninyo i-submit yung mga numero na yan? Opo, ma'am. Yung we'll mga gross ga gaming revenue. Yes, ma'am. Uh, for, for an idea, ma'am, from uh, 2018, uh, April up to October 2019, the peso amount was 604 million. Mukhang agitated, Mr. Chair, yung ating BIR at yung dole. Are you uh, listening? May, may gusto ba kayong sabihin tungkol uh, dito? Uh, but, but mukhang pantotoo to, o lugi ba to, o ano, nabubukulan ba tayo? Because I'm a little concerned about it. How do you really measure? As we speak right now, their earning. How is there really a, a, a way to, 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 audit, to audit this? And we're now they're paying 604 million to global. Uh, sir, uh, currently there's some issue with regards to the licensee or operators. Uh, currently they're not uh, paying franchise tax to the BIR. That's another issue. Because you are only talking about regula regulatory fees, the franchise tax. Exactly. Yung franchise tax is a different uh, uh, matter. Um, we, 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 we'll, we'll go to that later, no? We'll go to that later before the franchise tax. The $3.2 billion that we are talking about is just for 48 uh, POGO licenses. Is, is that a correct statement? Sir, I'd, I'd like to verify, sir. Because, because remember, there's 16. Mr. Bondok is merely the vice president for CSR. Yeah, we understand. So yes. We understand, but yes, at the same time, if you could provide us some financial statement, we'll send you we'd be very report. grateful. Yes, ma'am. Out of the, uh, from the 46 POGOs, ma'am, uh, the income from offshore, uh, the total first is 7 billion. No, uh, uh, we, we're talking about the 3.2 billion of GGR, eh. Kanina, di ba? You made mention. This is yeah. just for the 48. Now, is it 46 only? 48. Just 48. 48. So, 48. If that's uh, 48, you're looking at 60. So, may remaining 12 pa po. So, yung remaining 12, hindi pa ba nakokolek or anong status po nun? Are sir, they operating or not? Non-operational, sir. Non-operational yung yes, 12? Non-operational. Okay. Sige, thank you. Uh, can, can, can I just... Uh, you want to talk about the... It's okay. Uh, I think the, the, uh, the BIR raised another concern. No? Yung 2% is regulatory fees. 
what about the I think it's five percent, no? Ang franchise uh, uh, tax, if I recall, before we gave the Pag Court its charter, uh, Senator Aimee, when we were at the House of Representatives. Anyway, can can we uh, be uh, brief on this uh, particular uh, issue on franchise tax? So just to, to be clear, the 2% is our regulatory fee, and then the 5%, of course, is the franchise tax. And we're not withholding agents of that. So sila po ang diretsyong nagdideklara nun sa BIR. You have no uh, regulatory powers whatsoever if they are not paying franchise. Are they paying franchise tax, the BIR? Uh, not all, sir. Uh, in fact, sir, uh, 100% of the offshore-based uh, licenses are not paying franchise tax. How many? All of them, sir. All of them? Of the offshore base. Of the foreign base? Yes, yes sir. So, so, is that okay with Bagor? You are our state regulator, sir. I'm uh, sorry, sir. I, 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 yes, sir, I, I, I wish that uh, Bagor would, would send their... Uh, their, their president or chair or or, or, or the at least the, the the finance officer you're from CSR and I just I just don't uh, 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 think that uh, we should uh, overlook this this particular issue yes sir BIR is having a hard time looking for them and then here we are our state gaming regulator who just give the the license uh, freely like a cotton candy Sir, uh, that's been the bone of contention even in the, the lower house with regard to what actions we can take as the regulator. Uh, if we re receive reports from uh, BAR regarding this, then I think we will be uh, empowered to, to do something at least to sanction them or to cease their operation. Now that you know that uh, all of the foreign-based uh, POGO licenses have yet to to pay their franchise tax. Anong next step ng Bagcor dito? Uh, sir, we'll, uh, we will gladly investigate the matter, sir. We'd, we'd like to confirm it first. I think it's already confirmed because BIR is already saying that they're not yes, paying, sir. all of them. Uh, immediately, sir, we will... Uh, yes. And you're under yes, oath, yes, uh, Attorney D, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, so all... Yes, you stand sir. by your word, all of this foreign based Pogo licenses yes, have yet the to pay. Current data we have. Wow, we're only talking about franchise tax. Yes, uh, please. How about the Philippine based on, on franchise tax? Uh, I think, sir, the, uh, some of them are paying, sir. Some. So, hindi mo mo sinasabing all are paying. Mm, yes, sir. Oh, so, may butas din doon. Can we have a list kung sino yung nagbabayad and how much they're paying, sir? Uh, we will uh, so, try to find out. Yes, them, please. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank sir, you. Sir, sir, if I may, just for the health healthiness of the discussion uh, that that's really the contention even in a, another hearing uh, wherein they were contesting the status of taxation taxation because uh, kanina po sa pinag-usapan natin we it wasn't clear where uh, what services were actually directly engaged in in gaming here so so kung pag foreign sila sir they object but i think the, franchise tax is crystal clear to all of us Kaya, kaya ko rin tinanong, Mr. Chairman, yun sa Philippine base, kasi dapat equal lang treatment doon. So, if some are not paying, then we should find out sino. Franchise tax, withholding kasi tax, corporate tax, value-added tax. Yung competitor nila, may burden na they are not bearing. So, lamang sila. Perhaps we can ask the city of Makati why they come up with this uh, decision to uh, to no longer release uh, letters of uh, no objection doon sa pagbigay ng uh, business permit sa Pogo. Uh, what are the challenges and problems you encountered that, that uh, made you, uh, I mean, uh, to come at this uh, decision, uh, uh, Attorney uh, Certeza? Uh, first of all, good afternoon, Senators. Uh, uh, yung pong decision ng aming may may mayor and our, the administration was due to several factors some of which was already mentioned a while ago. Uh, nagkakaroon po kami ng experiences first about uh, crimes. Uh, we have noted an increase in uh, uh, petty crimes as well as 
serious ones involving the Pogo employees most of the time. And uh, bukod po doon, uh, we are also having difficulty in monitoring. Uh, we require the only hold that the city has over the Pogo operator is through the issuance of a business permit. And uh, once the business permit is issued, we conduct uh, spot monitoring po to determine if they are compliant. And there have been several occasions in the past that we noted that we issue a business permit for one entity allegedly operating on the ground floor and when we visit the establishment, they are occupying the entire building. So these, these, these are the problems that uh, we have encountered. And uh, in some of those instances, we were really forced to close down and uh, withhold or cancel their business establishment. For the record, po, uh, as of now, we have closed 31 Pogo operations already within Makati. Uh, added to this, uh, our dear senators, is also the fact that uh, we have noted an abnormal increase in the prices of rent, in the prices of uh, apartments, uh, because of the unusual influx of the foreign workers. Uh, napakataas na po ng, ng uh, naging renta as well as for the sale of real estate in Makati. It is already high and now it has become unusually high. And uh, our mayor was of the opinion that these would, these are in fact adversely affecting our own constituents already. And for that reason, uh, we have decided to, well, declare a moratorium. So lahat po na nag-ooperate ngayon, yun na po yung nabigyan ng letter of no objection uh, last year. But from uh, late na uh, last year until now, wala na po. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Uh, we'd like to... Uh you, you made mention about yung uh, spike in uh, crimes, uh, criminal activities, no, sir? Uh, perhaps we can uh, hear uh, from uh, PNP, kay, uh, Director uh, Joel Coronel, yes, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. The floor. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, for the past year, uh, we have recorded several incidents involving foreign nationals working in POGO operations or POGO-related activities. And uh, among the crimes reported, uh, the most serious or heinous ones are kidnapping, serious illegal detention, and kidnap for ransoms. For 2019, uh, our figures showed there were, there were a total of 14 kidnapping incidents involving a total of 58 foreign nationals, both victims and suspects, uh, mostly uh, Chinese nationals and Taiwanese nationals, sir. And apart from that, sir, uh, there are another... 56 recorded incidents involving other felonies such as assaults, robbery, uh, crimes against property, theft, and uh, other misdemeanors. But uh, recently, sir, our data shows that there is an increase in the instances involving prostitution and human trafficking. Uh, for the past year, uh, a total of five, oh, sorry, sir, uh, nine Prostitution dens or places uh, were raided by the Philippine National Police, uh, resulting to the rescue of a total of 191 foreign nationals, mostly Chinese, some are Vietnamese, two Russians, one Japanese, and two Mongolian, and the rest of about 89 suspects. Uh, 58 of, uh, sorry, sir, 59 suspects, 58 are Chinese and one Filipino. So all in all, uh, these are the recorded incidents uh, by the PNP involving foreign nationals connected with POG operations. And uh, we are coordinating with the Bureau of Immigration on this regard and other law enforcement agencies to address the problems, sir. Uh, thank you for that uh, report. Uh, Depcom, uh, 
from the Bureau of Immigration, no, as uh, upon hearing yung uh, reports ng ating PNP, as uh, already mentioned also by Attorney Certeza of uh, Makati, um, may we know how many foreign nationals did you deport in 2019? And perhaps how many of these uh, uh, were deported uh, for working without visa? Uh, sir, in uh, 2019, Mr. Chair, the BI deported 1,338 1, foreigners. 1,338 38. 38 foreigners. And uh, ito pong 1,338 uh, foreign nationals, ilan po dito yung uh, associated with POGOS? Associated? Um, I don't have the classification or categ category for that, uh, Mr. Chair, but I can provide later. Okay. Oh, th these are the total uh, foreigners deported by the Bureau on various offenses. Okay. Because in this uh, particular uh, deported uh, foreign nationals, if you look at 2018, about only 570 uh, were, were deported. No? Tapos ngayon 1,338. And looking at these figures, there are fugitives. In 2019, 733 of them. Do, do we know uh, kung saan galing itong mga fugitives? Ito, ito ba eh, karamihan po ba dito galing or associated with, with, with POGOS? Do we have any data about this? Uh, Mr. Chair, generally these are considered fugitives because they were declared fugitives by the Ministry of Public Safety of China. Um, normally so not entirely involved or associated in POGOS? Some are associated with POGOS. Like, or most uh, of them? Um, like uh, illegal online gambling. Uh, some are into investment scam. And, uh, um, I ask that question, sir, because um, in your operation in 2019, um, a total of 421 foreign fugitives who hide in the country to evade prosecution of their crimes, eh, na, 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 na huli po ninyo. Hit po yung report sa ating opisina. And this figure included 324 Chinese nationals, majority of whom were arrested in an online gaming raid conducted in Pasig City. Uh, would you concur with these uh, figures and this uh, information? Mr. Chair, in 2019, actually, we conducted almost 20 operations against uh, online gaming, and this resulted in uh, the arrest of uh, 1,707 uh, foreigners, mostly Chinese nationals. And uh, in so far as uh, raids against uh, illegal online gaming is concerned, um, this is normally done in cooperation with the Ministry of Public Safety or with the police attaché of the Chinese embassy here in the country. Um, and uh, those arrested, the Chinese nationals arrested, were normally declared uh, fugitives by their, uh, by their own country, by the Ministry of Public Safety. But w when they came in, in the country, normally they're... Uh, uh, they have uh, no, de no, no derogatory or, records in so far as our uh, derogatory information is. I concerned. remember that no, because I think at the end of the day we also have to uh, figure this out. This is an illegal operation in China. Illegal po ito. Hindi nila pinapayagan doon. Tapos tayo nandito, open arms, VIP treatment, pwedeng hindi magbayad ng buwis, pwedeng hindi magbayad ng withholding tax, pwede hindi magbayad ng franchise tax, pwede mag-promote ng prostitution, pwede mangidnap. And that's why we have to be careful about this. We have to be careful about this. I mean, these figures, wala, wala pa rin nagko-contest. 733 being fugitives in 2019 na nakapasok po dito. In fact, in one of your operations, the Chinese embassy 
was helping us to to pinpoint these fugitives, these Chinese fugitives na nandito po sa Pilipinas. This is just my point that I, na, na, na gusto ko sana ma, maintindihan ho natin. Do. Because Pogos are considering our country uh, a haven for foreign fugitives. Yun yung dapat nating iwasan. Um, example, ito pong uh, Times Square Premier Management. Uh, let me ask Pagkor if, if they're aware of this Times Square Premier Management. Uh, they were granted, according to them, a license uh, by Pagkor. May, may we know uh, uh, when did you grant a uh, license to Times Square Premier Management, which is a pogo rated uh, uh, company last December of 2019? Sir, so I'll have to check our records regarding uh, when they were issued. Yeah. Because uh, on our record, last December 2019, this particular company, Times Square Premier Management, hired 342 Chinese fugitives. And excluding these 342 arrested workers, we wanted to find out how many workers does this POGO licensee have in total? December 19 po yan of 2019. Uh, if you don't have the records, it's okay, sir. Uh, uh, isubmit na lang. But yes, we sir. wanted to find out, of the 342, ano pa yung denominator niyan? Ilan pang workers meron sila? Because if these companies are cuddling Chinese fugitives, eh, we have to do something about it. And then that's the thing, sir, no? Uh, uh, honestly, talagang nakaka-disappoint na sobra. Na we, we expect more from PAGCOR as our state regulator. We cannot just Yes, you're not a police, you're not the police, you're not the NBI, you're not the BIR, but uh, let's do something about this because it's growing. Another question that I'd like to raise, eh, how did Times Square Premier qualify for a log for a POGO license? Because your offshore gaming regulatory manual Okay, nag-aaral po ako, parang nasa college pa rin ako dito sa Senado. Bina inaaral ko po itong uh, inyong uh, uh, gaming regulatory manual, itong offshore gaming regulatory manual, and letter A yung qualifications, may seven po dyan na naka nakalista. Number four, nakalagay po dito, number four sa qualifications, must not be associated with any person who is not of good repute, considering character, honesty, and integrity, and has undesirable or unsatisfactory financial resources. May, may, may we know if, if Pagkor is, uh, you have this checklist, and nagagawa po natin ito, and if this qualification is met before licensing an, uh, uh, an, an entity like uh, Times Square Premier, sir. Uh, what uh, what we can do uh, with regard first to the employees, sir, with uh, is with what we have discussed now, the OGL licenses, which are still not completely ruled out. But I think that uh, most of that will uh, address the issue regarding the fugitive. Perhaps dun sa isa submit na lang sa committee, baka pwedeng malaman din. What is your next course of action considering? Nag-hire po sila ng 342 Chinese fugitives. Yes, sir. We, we, we will have to coordinate uh, with the proper authorities. For but, the but right now, are they still operating itong Times Square Premier Management? Suspended na po yan, sir. Ah, for, suspended. For okay. Week. Okay. Thank you. Before I go to, uh, to, to uh, BIR and talk about more taxes, um, si Senator Pia Cayetano also assured me that uh, she will hear yung bill natin uh, on taxing uh, POGOS and I hope we'll, we will all cooperate uh, to, to make sure that this uh, uh, will work at hindi ito uh, magiging dehado 
ang ating mga kababayan lalo na yung mga kagaya natin na paglabas ng paycheck e eh, automatic nagbabayad na tayo ng buwis. Let me just uh, ask the our friends uh, from from Ned ano uh, uh, regarding the overall state policy on uh, gambling before I I, I I I proceed with with other matters. Maybe be clarified sir by Ned on what is the what is the overall policy of the state with regard to uh, gambling and in this particular case itong uh, online uh, gambling we, we we wanted to know kasi sir if uh, or is for example pag course uh, licensing and the promotion of online uh, gaming industry is it also included in the uh, country's medium term and long term economic development plan floor sir Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, before I answer the question, Mr. Chair, I just want to uh, state for the record that uh, we support your efforts to better manage the inflow of foreign workers into our country. Uh, these are among the objectives, in fact, that uh, were discussed, are being discussed during the midterm review of the Philippine Development Plan. Uh, we also support uh, your efforts to improve tax compliance of both the POGO firms themselves and their employees. Uh, so we uh, definitely look forward to working with all the stakeholders to achieve these objectives. With respect to your question, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, there's no mention with respect to uh, gaming, uh, gambling, or POGOs uh, in the Philippine Development Plan. Um, so it's not something we are um, actively promoting, let me put it that way. What is your uh, position? What exactly is the end goal in... Uh hosting uh, offshore gaming operations do we i mean what's your position on this do we aspire to be the largest in asia or in the world or is this uh how we generate government revenues in addition to ofw remittances what, what is the position of ned on this mr chair there's no uh official position as such but what i can as i uh, said uh confirm is that it's not been discussed in any of the uh, planning committees uh, back in 2016 when we were formulating the uh, current development plan, neither in the current midterm review. So uh, there's no agency that's proposed it as a part of our development strategies. But, but you're looking into this. You, you're aware of what's happening. The, that's why you said you support our initiative to make sure that they pay the right taxes, etc. And we address all the social ills that is being brought about by this uh, uh, POGO industry. That's correct, uh, Mr. Chair. So, in fact, we're looking at uh, having a, uh, well, including this in the agenda of the uh, economic uh, development cluster. I hope we you, you look into this because uh, I, I, I'm wondering how this uh, uh, particular issue would be in line with the uh, collective long-term vision of building a future where every Filipino enjoys a matatag, maginhawa, at panatag na buhay. Anyway, sir, uh, what's the value of uh, foreign uh, direct investments from BOGO-related establishments in the Philippines in 2019? Is there a uh, correlation or some sort of value on this uh, uh, scheme? And what portion of overall FDIs to the country uh, does it uh, constitute if you have the data? I don't have that data, Mr. Chair, but uh, what I can mention is for FDI from China, uh, I think it's only in several hundreds of millions of dollars uh, as of last year. No? So it's not uh, the largest or one of the largest sources. We gain more from other FDIs. Is that what uh, you're saying? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. That's a good point. And it is logical for the government to channel its efforts in attracting FDIs other than uh, Pogos. I think it's a, that's a good point. Anyway, uh, let me go to, uh, 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 with our friends from BIR, you talk about registration of uh, Pogo-related establishments. Uh, to date, how many Pogo licenses are duly registered? 
with uh, the BIR and how many POGO service providers are registered with the BIR. Nakita niyo ho kanina yung yung listahan, yung ilan yung service providers, ilan yung POGOs, ilan po dito yung nakarehistro. Because if I recall, uh, in September of 2018 pa lang, you already issued a revenue memorandum circular requiring all foreign Philippine-based gaming operators uh, uh, to register with BIR as a prerequisite in the application and renewal of their parkour licenses. Sir? Yes, sir. Uh, with regards, sir, to the service providers, uh, they are all registered with the BIR, considering uh, they are all domestic corporations. With regards to the licenses, Your Honor, uh, all the offshore-based uh, licenses are not registered with the BIR. However, the, the local or the Philippine-based licenses are registered. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the last part. Uh, with, with regards to the Philippine-based uh, licenses, they are registered with the BIR. They are all? Yeah, yes. All registered. Now, we talk about this offshore um, license, uh, POGO licenses. Um, they are not registered. And their, their, their position is that they are based somewhere else. So, just help me on this. Uh, what is the position of BIR uh, on this particular uh, matter? That uh, they have to be registered uh, and why? Uh, sir, it's the position of the BIR that all licensees, whether offshore or Philippine-based, should be registered and pay franchise tax to the BIR. Okay. Um, that's all you can say, yes, sir. Uh, cur currently, sir, um, there is an issue as to the offshore base uh, licenses because they were able to get a legal opinion from the OSG, which uh, states that the that considering that the betting and payments are all made outside the Philippines, so ergo, the source of income is uh, outside uh, the the Philippines. But uh, we d disagree with that opinion, consider considering that all the operations and betting and the payment is only a part, a small part of the operations of a licensee. And as mentioned by Senator Pimentel, wh why get a license from Pagcor in the first place? So, so what's gonna happen with this? Are you, uh, what's your next step if they continue to uh, disregard? paying of uh, right taxes to BIR? Uh, sir, uh, in fact, uh, we plan to go after these licenses. And so, sorry, ma'am. PAGCOR can't do anything? Uh, are you coordinating uh, with PAGCOR? Uh, uh, yes, sir. In fact, sir, we would like PAGCOR to put in their manual that the registration with the BIR should be one of the requirements. Currently, it's not a requirement under the PAGCOR manual. Because it's crystal clear that they actually apply for license with PAGCOR. So meaning to say, they acknowledge the fact that uh, PAGCOR being our chief state uh, gaming regulator would be looking after them and that they need this license to operate and therefore they are bound to pay right taxes. Yes, sir. Anyway, in 2019, uh, sir, how many of the legal foreign workers in POGO-related establishments have registered with BIR? Talk about workers now and have these tax identification numbers. Sir, um, uh, I don't have the exact figures right now, but majority of the almost uh, maybe 90% have already registered with the BIR. Okay, and how much withholding tax did we collect from... Uh, these BIR registered uh, foreign workers? Um, sir, all in all, in 2019, almost 5 billion plus. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes, 5 billion plus. But how much uh, did they fail uh, to pay? Because you have a different uh, target uh, in looking at this. 
uh, I think I saw a, a, a slide. Yes, sir. You are so so. How much more are you expecting uh, uh, these registered uh, workers to pay? Sir, uh, as uh, I think it was uh, uh, it, uh, announced by the secretary, we were, we were expecting at least two billion a month as uh, withholding taxes. Yes, and uh, right now you're only talking about five billion for the entire year. Uh, yes, sir. But sir, can I uh, be allowed to explain? Please, please. Uh, sir. There are certain issues with regards to the withholding tax. Uh, the first issue is what kind of the uh, rate to use. Uh, uh, on the BIR, we are contending that the rate should be 25% gross, while the service providers are alleging that they should pay under Section 24, which is the graduated tax rates. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, the difference is uh, a bit big because if we allow them to pay under Section 24, our estimated collection would be around 7 to $8 billion on only. But if we tax them on the 25% uh, gross, uh, that's the $2 billion a month. Exactly. You know, um, based on uh, your estimate, and this is just looking at 130,000 workers, right? Yes, sir. If you look at the figures a while ago, uh, ang, ang Dole just, just issued 123,000 AEPs y yes, sir. Uh, just for this year. So... Uh, you're talking about a flat rate of 25% of gross income in 2018. Easily, you have you should have collected 30 billion yes, plus. Sir, can I add another yes, issue? Yes, please. There's also an issue with regards to the monthly salary. Uh, because based on the employment contracts that were submitted or shown to the BIR, the average salary of these workers would be around... 20 to 40,000 pesos only. But it is our contention that based on news articles, we uh, we read, uh, uh, this is a foreign-based uh, news, uh, newspaper, it should be at least 10,000 yuan or at least 78,000 pesos a month. 78,000. Would Pag would yeah. know uh, about that? Sorry. Perhaps does uh, Dole have any inkling how much is actually being paid to the average BOGO worker? Magkano ba sahod talaga dyan? Yung alam natin. Kasi, maliwanag kasi, uh, umalis yan ng China para magtrabaho rito. Alam na naman mas mababa yung sahod nila dito sa Pilipinas para umalis ng China. Eh pagkataas-taas na nga ng mga sahod sa China kung ihahambing sa dinideklara na 20,000 pesos monthly. Yes, ma'am. Based on contracts that they are submitting before the AAP can be issued, it would reflect that uh, they are paying only 20 to 40,000 pesos a month. Sa palagay ninyo, dahil mas experienced na kayo dyan, hindi niyo kayang hulaan kung talagang uh, nakakatanggap sila ng higit? Yes, I agree with the BIR, ma'am. We agree with the BIR na mga aabot ng mga 75,000 yan per employee. Oo, kasi ka, kahit pa paano, ihahambing mo yan sa kinikita sa China. Eh, syempre, hindi naman luluwas yan at aalis ng kanilang pamilya para lamang kumita ng mas maliit. Parang hindi naman na uh, matino yung gagawin ganon. Yung uh, pangkor natin, may, may idea ba kayo dyan sa mga rates? Hindi ba kasama sa lisensya yan na tatatuhin ng maigi ang mga empleyado Filipino man o dayuhan? Um, Ma'am, we ho have no official uh, uh, data on the, except uh, what is based on the contract. But Wala kayong but labor provisions doon sa registration or certification ninyo na binibigay sa lisensya? Kasama ba doon yung, kalakip ba doon yung number of workers, halimbawa? Yung Th there's, a gen of work. there's a general pong provision just regarding the compliance with all pertinent labor laws. Pero siguro ho... Saan binabase yung amount? Kasi ang balita ko, di ba, sabi mo nga, 200,000 to 500,000 US dollar mm -hmm. ang binabayad dun sa prangkisa. Kung ganon, saan ninyo binabase yung laki ng i-charge? 
di ba, yung Num- size ng operation, yes, kung number gano'ng kadaming tao. So, alam ninyo kung ilan yung empleyado. Hindi totoo na hindi ninyo alam. Uh, al- opo, may access po kami sa number ng empleyado. May access rin kayo sa binabayad o yung conditions or terms of work? Uh, Kasi yung, kayo nagbibigay ng prangkisa, siguro naman tatanong ninyo kung paano yun. Yung kontrata lang din po ang aming basihan kung magkano yung kanilang usapan regarding wages and the terms of conditions of their work. Are there ways for the dole to get behind the employment contract since we're all agreed that it's very unlikely the 20,000 is all that they're paying? Ano po ba magagawa natin para mahalaman? Yes, yung ma'am. Totoong uh, malaking sinasahod. problema. On top of the salary that they're claiming, uh, it's about 20 to 40,000. Meron pa silang mga allowances niyan. Kasi nakikita natin sila, di ba? Nasa gumagamit Small. sila ng magagarang kotse. Nakikita natin na yung relo at uh, yung yakag, eh talagang ayos na ayos. Sige sa lahat. Gumagastos sa Pilipinas sa magagandang restaurant, sa mga hotel, at uh, nagsusugal din. So, hindi naman siguro maaaring gawin lahat yon sa loob ng 20,000 pesos kada buwan. Ano? Sa palagay ninyo, ano kaya ang magagawa pa natin para malaman natin? Iting po namin sa inter agency with the BIR, yun nga ang sabi namin na hindi katanggap-tanggap yung 25 to 40,000. Siguro mag-set tayo ng exact figure will come kung uh, magkano talaga kung okay lang ang BIR that they will be allowed to pay at 60,000 i-fix natin yung rate but uh, uh, hindi pa yata na finalize yun ma'am pero kung 25 to 40 napakababa talaga not to mention the allowances that they are receiving what are you intending to do to just impose on the employer the remainder of the 78,000 we assume that they are uh, receiving minus the 20,000 they're declaring, ganun ba? I, I think the BIR, BIR ma'am is in the right position to answer that ma'am. Pero parang bawal yata yun, kasi yung dineklara lang sa kontrata, yun na yun eh. Uh, actually ma'am, under the tax code, it is the employer who has the liability to withhold and remit. DEL ng pagor, hindi yun ba papasok yun? That how much you are, you will be receiving? For, for the license. Because I think Pagcor, no? uh, with all due respect, I think pag tinitignan natin, lahat sila parang y- y- you are directly communicating with these guys. You're the ones issuing license. So why not Pagcor lead the way to ensure that they will be able to pay the right taxes? Or in this particular matter, we are debating ito ba talaga yung sweldo nila? 20,000? Parang walang naniniwala sa akin? 40,000? I think Pagcor can help. Did you even ask Pagcor to help you out? <laughs> Sige, oh, sir. sir. Well, currently, sir, of course, the structure of the OGEL does not uh, accommodate such. Uh, pero p- pwede naman, sir. Kasi we c- it is up to uh, what you will empower us to do. It's uh, raised by Senator I mean, It's important that uh, you look at the, uh, the uh, uh, ability of these uh, licenses to uh, follow our labor laws. But anyway, sir, let's go back dun sa sinasabi nyo. 5 billion yung nakolekta, you're looking about 30 billion dun lamang po sa withholding tax ito. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Withholding tax, hindi pa kasama ang corporate tax, hindi pa kasama ang franchise tax, hindi pa kasama ang value-added tax. Is that correct? Yes, sir. But, sir, uh, if you, uh, sir, like the licenses, if they pay franchise tax of 5%, this is already in lieu of the other taxes. This is provided by Presidential Decree 1869. So they just have to pay the 5% franchise tax. Unfortunately, not a single foreign-based uh, POGO uh, uh, pays uh, franchise tax. Yes, sir. Currently, out of this time. Yes, so now, okay, sabi nyo, projection nyo, 30B a year, but you collected 5B. Anong plano natin? Anong course of action natin ngayon? Uh, Magdidepende lang po ba tayo dun sa mga... Uh, labor inspectors ng dole na mahuli sila dahil it looks like yung the last three na nakita natin na nahuli at na-inspect ng dole, ng, ng uh, BI, right there and then yung three out of four wanted to open up right there and then they made a statement they're willing to pay. For example, yung isang kumpanya I forgot the name of the company, they're willing to pay right away 1.2 billion pesos. 
uh, ano na ho ba yung status nitong mga ito? Nagbayad na ho ba sila? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, the, currently what we did is write them a letter. The commissioner wrote them a letter. But this is merely uh, voluntary on their part. Now, uh, this year... With voluntary on their part if they should pay? No, no sir. Meaning, uh, based on that letter, they must pay. But this is not uh, an enforcement letter. Now, after uh, this year, those who did not pay, the Bureau intends to issue letters of authority to audit them. Okay, and uh, pag hindi pa rin, that would lead to shutdown of the uh, um, Maybe the even operation. cases, sir. Cases against and it, when, when that's happening, uh, PAGCOR is also, for example, that particular company, sabi ng PAGCOR, sinuspend na nila. So, gan ganun na ho ba yung, ano, ninyo, yung uh, polisiya uh, pag may mga nakikitang ganito? Definitely, sir. Uh, immediate suspension or cancellation. Thank you. Uh, at this juncture, let me acknowledge our uh, 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 colleague, Senator uh, Win Gachelan, who's also a member of the Committee on Labor. Uh, let, let's continue, no? Uh, so we're only talking about withholding taxes. So all in all, pag kinumpute ho natin, pag sinama na natin dyan yung corporate tax, franchise tax, and I'm only talking about legal, ah, because we're all talking about legal entities na inisyuhan ng lisensya. Magkano ho yung hindi natin na-enjoy bilang isang bansa sa mga pogos na ito na hindi nagbabayad ng tamang buwis? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, assuming, sir, based on 25%, that's almost 30 billion. Then, based, sir, on the, I think, sir, for 2019, PAGCOR collected uh, at least 8 billion as regulatory fee. So I think that would be, that's only 2%. If it's franchise ta tax of 5%, that would be at least 17 to 18 billion. So almost, maybe, sir, 50 billion in taxes. So we're looking at about 50 billion yes, sir. in taxes alone na hindi po nababaya. And that's why, again, we we are here to find out how we can uh, make sure that this will work. Um, and we have not talked much about the social ills that it brings no, to, to the country, as mentioned a while ago by Attorney Certeza. Uh, anyway, I will uh, allow my, my colleagues to, to ask questions. Yeah, uh, uh, a lot of my colleagues are, are, are requesting our resource persons to, to give to give their uh, positions, uh, yung mga data that, that we ask from you. We have not asked, sorry, from the NBR, uh, our Chief Cybercrime Division. Uh, and we give the floor to uh, Mr. Lorenzo, what you can uh, share with us in this uh, hearing. Thank you, sir, for your patience. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, your honors. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, we already submitted our position paper, uh, including some of the statistics uh, for the raids that we have conducted. And just like the Philippine National Police, sir, uh, we have seen uh, some uh, criminal violations related to PAGCOR, uh, no, POGO employees. But let uh, we also realize, sir, that because of the unusual influx of foreign nationals, somehow, sir, the organized crime migrated also here in the Philippines doing criminal activities. So we are also addressing that issue, sir, aside from assisting and doing our part in addressing the uh, uh, matters uh, that we are discussing. Meaning you're saying this is definitely a great concern from 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 the NBI's perspective? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Are you conducting surveillance operations on this, uh, example, yung mga naririnig natin na illegal? Alam nyo, yung opisina ko, napakadami kong nare-receive na mga information eh. Uh, hindi, hindi namin mabivet lahat. Uh, Pinaforward na lang namin. I think we're, we're some of uh, the information is being uh, forwarded to NBI. Do you conduct yung mga surveillance uh, operations sa mga ito? 
please uh, use the microphone. Yes, Your Honor, we are conducting surveillance based on the information that we receive from the public or an informant. But we have some uh, challenges, Your Honor, in terms of manpower. Uh, but we do uh, conduct surveillance and we do uh, raids. Because it's alarming to note 730 plus international fugitives are here. Um, dun sa mga kinundak na inspections and we'd, we'd like to uh, 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 again remind our authorities, our police, our NBI, um, yung in-inspect, legal po ito. Ito yung may lisensya mula sa PAGCOR. And yet, we were able to see 6,600 plus illegal uh, foreign workers. So we really have to do more. And uh, kung ano man yung matutulong ho namin, uh, come budget season, eh, may tatlo na ho kayong kakampi dito. No? If, if you would uh, give us the, the, the figures that you need in order to uh, help us out. In this Mr. initiative, Chair. yes, uh, Senator Mr. Marcos. Chair, um, I um, am familiar with Mr. Lorenzo's work in the Cybercrime Division. Kaya ba natin alamin kung anong nangyayari dito sa online gaming? Uh, halimbawa, may criminal activities at pangangalakal na sa online, digital. Malalaman ba natin kung purus sa uh, online gaming lang? Kasi nakakaduda naman yung pagtaas ng fugitives. 100 plus lang yun dati, biglang naging halos 800. Parang nakakagulat yan, baka syempre, nabalitaan na maluwag dito sa Pilipinas, hindi mahuhuli, halimbawa. At saka yung pangangalakal nga ng iba pang uh, criminal activities online. Do we have the capacity to actually find out kung ano nangyayari online dito sa mga pogo? Or intrusion of privacy na yan? Uh, your Honor, una -una, uh, your Honor, wala kaming visitorial powers. So we rely, uh, we, we rely, Your Honor, in application for search warrant before we could enter a specific premise. Ang isang so sa ang dole lang ang may authority, I think. Ang pagkaintindi ko correct? sa dole, pati na rin sa ating uh, BI, pati na rin yung DOF, pati ang PNP, walang online monitoring. Yung actual nga, pasulput-sulput lang, yung spot monitoring, Paano yung online? Kasi nakakabit sila lahat sa internet, lahat ng oras ng gabi at araw eh. Unfortunately, Your Honor, wala kasi tayong specific gateway and there's no way for law enforcement to monitor yung traffic, Your Honor. Ang isa pang challenges, isa pa sa mga challenges namin is yung ano, sir, uh, sharing ng office space. We have monitored uh, some uh, online gaming uh, plat uh, facilities na meron na katab katabi na hindi involved sa gaming but involved in some illegal activities for example yung mga investment scam tapos yung mga clickbaits credit card scams yung skimming lahat yun kasama eh parang hindi na hinihiwalay yung uh, under pagcor na activities na alam nating legal at yung ibang activities na talaga naman cyber fraud na. Tama yun yun, or honor, na may mga instances na na-encounter namin yung ganyan. May capacity ba kayo? Kaya ba ninyong alamin lahat dyan? Halimbawa, binigyan kayo ng visitorial powers or monitoring uh, powers. Kaya naman ng NBI alamin yan? Medyo mapapaikli lang, ma'am. Yung, ano, yung processing time namin at magiging more efficient kami if we will be given visitorial powers. Pero madaming legal challenges dun, ma'am. May nahuli na ba kayo? Uh, ma'am, we have already provided yung uh, report in the statistics. Mada mayroon na rin kami nahuli. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Uh, within the Pogos. Uh, yes, your within honor. Pogos, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, siguro let's let's hear from uh, sorry sir anti money laundering office uh, director uh, Rosella perhaps he, uh, he can uh, give us some uh, very important information about this uh, about this uh, industry sir you have the floor thank you uh, for your patience thank you uh, Mr. Chair and good afternoon uh, Senator Linda Tarian uh, Senator Amy Marcos and Senator uh, Joel Villanueva so uh, just to put uh, things in proper perspective, uh, the AMRC would initially conduct risk assessments 
So we conducted three risk assessments uh, already related to uh, POGOS. The first one is in 2017. It's more of a general assessment of the uh, national uh, risk uh, in regard to the AML framework. We call that national risk assessment. It covered the period 2015 to 2017. And then uh, in particular, uh, we likewise uh, uh, conducted a risk assessment for, for the POGOS. The first uh, assessment that we did was uh, in regard to the financial impact uh, if we stop the POGO operations. And the second one is... Uh, yes, that's your recommendation? Uh, uh, yun lang po yung, yung subject. Okay. And then second po yung uh, risk assessment in regard to POGO. So going back to the first uh, assessment on the financial impact, uh, based on our records, uh, the total financial flow or because our study is a financial flow analysis. So the total financial flow uh, within the Philippines is only 54 billion pesos. That includes uh, inflow and outflow. So if we deduct the outflow from the inflow, the net inflow would be around 7 billion only. So uh, comparing that to our economy at uh, 18.6 trillion, uh, Mr. Chair, 54 billion uh, flows, uh, financial flows, would only have a 0.29% impact to our economy. And if, uh, Sorry, we sir, 0.29%. 9%. And if uh, we use the net, uh, net inflow uh, figure, that will be around 0.04%, uh, Mr. Chair. 0.04%. That is if you use the net figure, which is 7 billion pesos. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Now, going to the second uh, risk assessment, so uh, what we did was to, uh, uh, to assess all our uh, intelligence information that we gathered. That includes the suspicious transaction reports as well as the covered transaction reports. And uh, we concluded that we needed to validate, validate some, some numbers. So we conducted our uh, risk assessment. And uh, this uh, risk assessment uh, discovered that uh, there is low level of AML CFT awareness uh, and regulation on the part of POGOS. Uh, there is an increasing level of threat to money laundering and other fraudulent activities. Threat pa lang po. Uh, there's a high number of uh, unregulated and unsupervised service providers and there is low level of beneficial ownership identification. As a result, uh, our recommendations uh, included increased level of uh, AML CFT effectiveness of compliance and supervision through training and workshops, revisit our uh, supervision of internet-based casinos and service providers, and reevaluate the licenses of uh, internet-based casino operators. In particular, Mr. Chair, uh, since uh, POGOS are licenses for PAGCOR, uh, normally, they would be within our uh, AML CFT uh, supervision framework, uh, excluding the company service providers. However, upon the recommendation of the risk assessment, uh, we discovered that they will fall under the service provider, company service providers uh, umbrella of the covered persons of the AMLA. And therefore, uh, we, it is our position that they should also be part of the covered persons uh, included. And so uh, we, we recrafted our uh, supervision framework for, for the POGOS. Uh, we are now uh, scheduled to inspect not just the POGOS, but also the service providers. And there will be two, there will be two legal framework. Uh, for the POGOS, we will apply the casino implementing rules and regulations. But for the ca ser service providers, we will apply the company service providers, which applies to other uh, covered persons. That's, that's good. That's very uh, comforting to hear that uh, uh, AMLC uh, uh, is doing its share in proactively addressing these uh, issues at hand. Thank you. Uh, you um, uh, Mr. Chair, Director Rafaela, you heard the um, projected tax uh, collection of the BIR. Would that change things regarding the net inflow? Certainly, kapag nakakolekta tayo ng mas malaking tax, di siyempre lalaki na yung inflow sa 7 billion. 
sa palagay ninyo projecting the amounts that uh, they mentioned, will it be worth it? Uh, our analysis, uh, uh, Madam Senator, is uh, only in regard to financial transactions within the banking system. So if they use the banking system as a payment mode, then that will be falling under our monitor. That's right, because in many, many cases, the transactions are um, not within the banking system at all. Speaking of, bank, speaking of banking system, no, uh, we have with us a uh, representative from Banco Central ng uh, Pilipinas. May we know, ma'am, if, uh, uh, if you have uh, completed that, that, that studies, uh, mm -hmm. you started last year, I remember, uh, to analyze the impact of... Uh, online gaming uh, it was mentioned last time by by our friends from bsb that they have this uh, uh study on the uh, impact of online gaming on various sectors and we just we just wanted to find out and uh perhaps if we can uh, get some information from uh, bsp regarding uh, uh banking risks associated if there are some risks with uh, the offshore gaming industry um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Senator Gachagan. Let me just um, consult with my colleagues on the results of the study. Sure, uh, but you can also give us your, your, your views on this uh, particular issue. Um, If I may read a segment of the yes, report, please. Mr. Chair. Yes, In terms please. of the impact on the real estate market, preliminary findings show that Pogos have been a strong contributor to the growth of various segments of the property market. In terms of office space demand, Pogos have outpaced the business process outsourcing sector. In terms of office space demand in Metro Manila and accounted for the bulk of office space demand in the second quarter of 2019, an increase from the 29% share in the first quarter of 2019. Nonetheless, in the event of cancellation of Pogo licenses, the property sector is still expected to continue to be supported by other demand drivers, such as the traditional non-BPO tenants, the government agencies, engineering and construction firms, and flexible workspace operators. Oh, yung uh, banking risks, if there are risks well, uh, associated with the yeah, offshore gaming. Um, yeah. in, in the past year, Mr. Chair, we've actually included this uh, in the scope of our on-site examination. And basically, the banks are assessed um, uh, based on their, uh, the, the way they handle the POGO accounts in their banking transactions. So our expectations are they should have done the required appropriate due diligence on the uh, POGO counterparty, as well as they have monitored the transactions of the POGO accounts in their bank. So if they detected certain suspicious transactions flowing in or out of the banking system, they have to report this as well to the AMLC, Mr. Chair. You recommended this to Pagor? Mr. Chair, this formed part of our reports of examination and the list of unregistered POGOs uh, collected during on-site examination were transmitted to the AMLC. At present, do you have, uh, have your surveillance uh, caught any hint or, or signs of uh, credit risk related to uh, uh, offshore gaming industry? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, because uh, the transactions are limited to flows of fl inflows and outflows of cash transactions. You have no capacity to. to uh, we they're not monitor. really exposed to the borrowing. Um, they, the bank doesn't actually lend to this focus, so there's um, minimal, if ever, credit risk to this uh, organization. Senator Gachelian, Mr. Chair, I just want to. Uh, I've been reading a lot about um, how Pogo is driving the property market. In fact, more than half of new sales uh, is now um, being driven by the Pogo sales. No, But I'm just wondering if these property companies are borrowing to build and sell. Do you have any information to do that, uh, uh, to pertaining to that? Yes, Mr. Chair, the, the property developers actually have loans from the bank, so they, they use these loans to, to, to build the, the, the properties. But as to what percentage of the property... But have you looked at this? Because um, my, my point is, if these um, new sales are being leveraged uh, by debts, 
and then the buyers, because the buyers will pay this on a long-term basis. No, uh, uh, that's as far as um, property sales goes by. Um, and in an event, for example, this Pogo businesses will now go back, no, because this is actually a very um, volatile situation, eh? in a sense that China is saying that Pogo is illegal but we're actually hosting an illegal activity in the eyes of China. So meaning, if one day China will say no more to this activity, and then all of these companies have already bought property and they are going to pay this property over time, maybe you know, five, 10 years or over time, then the entities that will be left holding the bag will be the banking entities. Have you looked at this scenario? We, we don't have uh, exact figures, Mr. Chair, but we do have anecdotally discussed this with real property developers, and they represented that they have already set limits in terms of their exposures to this entity. So, like, it's around 10% of their total. Prop you're talking to property companies. They'll yes, probably yes. say developers. that to developers. Yes. They'll probably say that so that you you can sleep at night and uh, don't worry. No, but the goals of these property companies is to sell as many as possible. That's their job. Eh? And to whoever who wants to buy. I don't think they will regulate whoever wants to buy their property yeah. because that's their business. Yeah. No? Yeah, that's our anecdotal. Uh, but Mr. Chair, just to also present the, the BSP's measures to ensure that the banking system will not suffer just in case uh, these clients of property developers would, again, uh, go back to their home countries. We we have actually put in place the real estate stress testing um, mechanism wherein we have set limits. Uh, we, we require banks to stress test their exposures, real estate exposures, assuming a 25% write-off. And based on that write-off, they have to meet certain capital thresholds. So based on the latest real estate stress testing conducted by the Banco Central, banks have actually met the minimum capital requirement even after the required write-off. That's how we monitor the real estate exposures across the industry to ensure that the banking system is um, cushioned in terms of losses that they might uh, sustain if this would happen, Mr. Chair. You have conducted the stress test. So that's a regular activity being okay. conducted by the bank. And the latest Mr. one Chair. is the banking system can still withstand yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. in an event that this uh, businesses will suddenly yes, disappear. Mr. That's, from that's right, shores. Mr. Chair. Okay. Just, just to also just to give some context, because the minimum capital requirement right now is a 10% capital adequacy ratio, yet the banking industry's capital adequacy ratio is around 15%, Mr. Chair. So it's a comfortable margin over the minimum requirement. In, in, a, in a summary, please submit to this committee uh, that stress test you mentioned. We'll do, Mr. Uh, Chair. In the context of if ever this type of businesses can suddenly disappear. And yeah. it's, it's possible, no? Yes, uh, if you take into account geopol geopolitics, if you take into account pronouncement of China, again, this is a very unusual setup eh, wherein the customer is saying it's illegal, but the host is saying, no, it's legal. No. And uh, it, 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 it presents a very volatile business environment wherein they can just one day say, okay, goodbye, at least na kami dito, and then we'll be left holding the asset, which is all financed through leverage. No? Yes, if I may uh, just share with the chairman and senator. Yes, senator um, uh, Marcos. But before you share, let me uh, acknowledge the vice chair of this committee. Uh, she's still uh, with perfect attendance, Senator Nancy Binay. Yes, Senator Aimee, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Just uh, as a matter of sharing uh, and reinforcing Director Lynn Javier's finding, I think um, I've looked at the um, prospectus and uh, the the projections, both of the Li Chu developments as well as um, Double Dragon, and they seem fairly sanguine that this is not going to uh, bring on the collapse of the real estate uh, sector. Thank you. Yes, yeah, let's, we'll, we'll wait for your summary and uh, just to put that uh, executive summary on record, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, so uh, that basically, um, we will we'll, we'll, the summary of our Yes, we'll be expecting that, that uh, Director of Yes. Thank you. Let's let's just uh, give the floor to our uh, ASEC uh, Aradanas, um, sir. Um, regarding housing development uh, issues uh, arising uh, from the influx of Pogo workers, 
Have you made any studies on the effect of the influx of pogo workers in the country on the uh, 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 we talk about property uh, prices here? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Your Honors. Um, uh, first of all, allow me to thank no, uh, Your Honors for the approval of the creation of the department. And incidentally, the three of us voted uh, for it. Uh, yeah. Thank you po. Uh, and incidentally po, uh, the Dishud will be celebrating its first anniversary on Valentine's Day, this Friday. But uh, it is also... Important to note that Senator Gretchenian will have a date this time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Quezon City po ba? <laughs> May marami daw single doon, sir. Uh, ano po? Dabat <laughs> pala sa date. <laughs> Sige. Uh, ano po? Uh, no, uh, our secretary po has already ordered no, the review of all policies, rules, and regulations. Kasi as, as young as we are, we are still in the transition period. So, uh, in general po, yung mga pogo sites, wala pa po kaming monitoring pagdating dun sa kanila. But we are, we are in review, we are in transition, and uh, I would appraise the department, especially our secretary, with regards to the concerns raised by this committee. But have you ever uh, heard some news, for instance, um, Filipino, uh, uh, Filipinos, uh, Filipino residents in various condominiums na napo-force na umalis at maghanap ng ibang re-rentahan dahil uh, tumaas na yung uh, uh, tumaas ng gusto yung uh, uh, renta sa kanilang mga units? Uh, Your Honor, personally, uh, pero uh, this, these are not verified facts. No? Yun po, may, we heard about that, pero hindi nga siya verified. But uh, we also have a number of information na uh, uh, a number of houses within the vicinity of Rojas Boulevard are being rented out for as high as 250 to 400K as residential units of uh, executives from Pogo. But uh, yeah, we so, have, we so have there, 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 there you have it. You have, uh, you have facts it's there. It's not verified. It's not verified. Okay. Uh, I can give you a lot of uh, 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 letters coming from uh, my office. No, okay, uh, yung binanggit kanina ni Attorney Certeza. Uh, would you say that the, uh, there is or hindi nyo pa napag aralan if there is indeed a uh, uh, real property uh, bubble going on? Hindi pa po namin napag aralan Hindi pa. Yes, Siguro Senator Binay, please. Kasi nabanggit niyo po yung sa Rojas Boulevard area. Yung Binay Vox, yung kapatid ko. <laughs> <laughs> yung isang kapatid. <laughs> uh, Nandito ang Chief of Police ng Makati. Ha? Mag-ingat ka, well, Senator. Dati sila nakatira somewhere there sa Rojas Boulevard. But uh, dun sa laki ng renta na in-offer sa kanya, na-afford niya ng mag sa Bel Air. So, ganun wow. yung, ganun kalaki yung ino-offer. So, there's, there's somehow a semblance of truth to the report we, we got. I Pero think. Konti pa lang po yun. Um, but we would appreciate kung you can share the I, We were sharing this information because we expect you guys to, to, to look into it, please. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. We would appreciate mm -hmm. that. Uh, we, we. Kaso lang, Chair, kasi in light of this... Gusto uh, yatang malaman ni Senator Nancy yung report ng Chief of Police tungkol dun sa mga sa mga activities ng mga POGO employees. Sir, uh, you have the floor. Yes, uh, good afternoon to the Honorable Senator Sen. Sir, what I have here with me is the are the numbers only. Uh, since 2016 up to 2019 of numbers of the numbers of crimes including uh, traffic accidents involving foreign nationals whether suspect or victims so for 2016 uh, the number is 331 2017 315 2018, 302, but for last year, 
458 is the number of incidents uh, involving foreign nationals, whether suspect or victims. This includes the traffic incidents. So talagang lumaki based on the 2018 number, tumaas po ng 50% yung number involving foreign nationals. At isa po kayo sa nag-recommenda in the city of Makati para isuspend muna itong uh, pagbibigay ng lisensya sa mga it, uh, pogos. It, it's one of the factors, uh, sir. I mean, you recommended uh, as, as chief I, of police of Makati. You are I, also I, part I, of the recommending uh, uh, group. Um, I, I did not recommend to the local chief executive directly, but I think uh, this is one of the factors. Uh, that's yes, why he decided. Yes, the numbers to. would speak for itself. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, sir, siguro for submission na lang ng Bureau of Immigration, yung, um, I don't know, or DOLE, or which government agency. Um, kasi di ba pag pumapasok ko sila dito, it's either visa upon arrival or through our embassy or consulate from China. Can you just submit to the committee, kung ilan doon yung na-convert into um, ano ba yun? Uh, either yung, ano ba yung ini-issue ng BI na special work permit or, or AEC from DOLE. Um, for submission na lang, um, Mr. Chair. And then, um, siguro in light of itong NCOV uh, virus, na monitor ba natin dun sa uh, registered or recognized POGO employees. Yung demographics, kung ilan ba nang galing sa uh, Hubei province or may ganun ba tayong ano, uh, data that we can access? Ah, hindi ko ka alam eh. Well, yung isa sa mission lang. But yung ganong, hindi naman profiling, but uh, ganong klaseng data na, kasi ilan ba yung na-approve na natin na may work permit sa Pogo? 100 plus? 100,000? The uh, do, uh, Dolly's record for 2019 is 123,000, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, they're all, 123,000, they're all from, uh, or affiliated with Pogo. And then, may, na, ano nyo na ba yung data kung sa, ilan doon ang galing sa Hubei province, or um, May mga latest ba na... Uh, we, we don't have it right now, sir, but we could probably check bam, based on the passport. But of course, we have to work closely with the immigration, with the immigration to find out kung para magkaroon ng demographic. Uh, ano. And then, um, dun sa isang hearing din namin dun sa NCOV, parang nabanggit ni Secretary Duque na isang problema nila is... Um, yung may language barrier. And in fact, si Ms. Teresita Angsi, uh, naging concern din niya, niya yun eh, na uh, may language barrier. May campaign ba yung DOLE or yung PAGCOR to teach itong mga nagtatrabaho sa POGO on how to help us uh, stop the spread of uh, NCOV virus? Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, we were discussing uh, earlier that there, uh, upon the issuance of the OGL license, we will also be conducting seminars regarding teaching the, the foreigners uh, about our culture, and that will include also the, the health concerns. OGL is Offshore Gaming Employment License. Um, but this is a pressing concern, or nag-set up na ba kayo ng hotline for uh, itong mga... Chinese Pogo employees na pwede nilang tawagan. Kasi di ba marami sa kanila hindi naman marunong magsalita ng English. So, ano yung mechanism for them to call a uh, number wherein ang sasagot sa kanila ay uh, marunong mag-Mandarin or kung ano man yung Chinese dialect that they can converse with. Meron na ba tayong ganong uh, facility? Ma'am, the only mechanism that we've initiated uh, so far is the quarantine, which we have lengthened to 14 days. Uh, aside from that, wala pa po regarding your question, yung makausap po sila. Uh, Mr. Chair, siguro baka uh, 
magandang pag-ara. Tingnan, baka yes, pwede kayong mag um, uh, set up ng ganong hotline na kung saan baka naka-experience sila ng yung certain symptoms of the virus and they can call that hotline and uh, teach them yung kung ano yung what to do, where to go, yung mga ganong uh, protocol. Um, yun yes, lang, ma'am. Mr. Chair. Uh, ma'am. Yes, uh, just last week, ma'am, the Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce went to our office because they are planning to set up a uh, Mandarin language school all over the country. And I think they're more than willing enough to be called upon, requested upon to, to help us dun sa suggestion nyo, and we will do that, ma'am, with the Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce. Sir, uh, one last uh, issue, no? Na binang binanggit kasi kanina ni Senator Win. Ano ba itong labor market testing, how we are uh, conducting it? Siguro yung remind ko lang, uh, ibang industry ng Pogo than manufacturing, then I think we have to tweak a bit on how we are doing our labor market testing and sir it's really uh, a great concern on our end to see 188.7% increase baka ho yung dating SWP na iniiwasan natin eh lumipat lahat dun tapos ganun din may express lane din check nyo lang din baka meron din kagaya nung nangyari sa SM Aura baka merong express lane at uh, mga milagrong nagaganap. Another thing, no, and we were talking about the, the importance of having this uh, labor market testing. We, we filed the bill, itong Senate Bill 343, and again, let me put this on record uh, once more. We are not against foreign uh, employees. Kasi magbe-benefit dyan in the end ang ating bansa, ang ating mga kababayan. It's just that we have to make sure that there's this understudy program there's a mechanism that there would be change of, I mean, transfer of knowledge. Para sa ganon, in the future, Filipino na yung mga hire natin. For example, if we are looking at Pogo industry to be, you know, it's somehow nakikita natin, yeah, it will continue. Have we ever talked to TESDA, for instance, to say, let's say, we have 32 language skills institutes all over the country. Why not? Why not uh, roll out a training program uh, na, na mag-aral, magsalita, at mag-converse ng Mandarin para mga Pilipino na lang ang makaka, makakakuha nitong uh, uh, trabaho na ito. Sana ho meron tayong ganun. No? Na, again, yung bottom line nito is uh, maging proactive po tayo. Another thing that I'd like to, to raise, kasi dun sa latest SWS uh, survey, isa sa mga concerns ng ating mga kababayan, itong proteksyon ng ating mga kababayan, um, workers natin, in general public, dito sa uh, sa, sa bagong uh, industriya ng Pogo. So, my, my question would, would be for, for the interagency, how do you address this increasing fear among the general public about the spike of uh, kidnappings? Ayan, binanggit uh, kanina ng mga kapulisan natin, uh, yung prostitution dens, ang Makati, we commend them, yung dalawa na malaki at uh, uh, mga mamahaling uh, uh, prostitution dens na pasara nila, and other crimes that are linked with the proliferation of offshore gaming activities in the Philippines. I think it's important na, na merong ginagawa ang interagency, ano yung mga plano pa nila, Sir, siguro, being uh, the, the lead agency of the Inter-Agency uh, Task Force, uh, Yusek Eberle. Uh, uh, right now, sir, uh, wala pa ho, Mr. Senator, but we will take this up with the interagency through the Department of Justice na kasama po sa interagency. Tama natin hula dyan, cyber crimes, yung uh, threat yes, of uh, money laundering, etc. Uh, baka pwedeng isama ho yun and at the same time uh, uh, give us a feedback yes, kung sir, ano man ho yun. So that uh, if there's also the a need to uh, amend or legislate something, uh, we'll be able to do it. So salamat po if there's anything uh, else. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I just want to make uh, a statement, Mr. Chair, in light of the statement ni... Uh, Mr. Victor ng NBI na may mga 
sindikato or organized crime na nag-operate dito. And this is actually one of my greatest fear, no? Na itong mga sindikato nag-operate na sa ating bansa as evidenced by the prostitution then that proliferated in various parts of Metro Manila. Ang nakakatakot dito eh nag-umpisa lang 'yan diyan. Ang susunod niyan, human trafficking. Ang susunod niyan, ibang mga crime, drugs. Susunod diyan, kidnapping. Kaya ang nakakatakot dito, itong sindikato nandito na nag-ooperate na sa bansa natin. Dito dito tayo natatakot eh. At uh, nagtataka lang ako sa dami ng news report na nahuhuli, pero ang dami pa rin. No? Ang dami pa rin. Parang hindi humihinto. Either patuloy sila pumapasok o yung nahuhuli, nakakawala at bumabalik sa dating gawin. So that's my biggest fear, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. And it's good that you uh, raised this issue because this, this, this uh, criminal syndicates will continue to operate in our shores if we don't catch them, apprehend them, and put them behind bars. At uh, if we don't also be strict in their borders, meaning Bureau of Immigration, makakapasok at makakapasok talaga dito yan. At uh, ang kinakatakutan ng komunidad natin, hindi hinto yan dyan eh. Naniniwala ako, papasok rin yan sa iba pang mga krimen. That's, and that's what I want to uh, flag our Of course, our, our, our brothers and our friends in uh, PNP and also in MBI to really enforce and make sure that these people end up behind bars and don't operate in our streets. Yun po ang nakakatakot. Eh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator uh, Wynn. Uh, lumang salitang Tagalog po ang pogo, which means pigil o putol. Hindi kaya ito ang dapat nating gawin sa mga pogo na yan. Pigilin, putulin na muna ang pogo operation hanggang hindi na isasaayos ang lahat ng sistema. It's a question that I'd like to raise uh, dito sa ating committee. Magbabanggit lang po ako ng ilang mga punto na lalong nagpatibay ng posisyon natin na dapat maayos at siguraduhin nating tama ang ating mga hakbang with regards to uh, this pogo industry. Una, it is clear that more resources, more manpower, more budget allocation is needed to deal with these pogos. Nauubos po ang resources natin sa regulation ng sektor na ito at sa pag-manage ng inflow of foreign workers involved in pogos. Pero napakaliit lang pala ng beneficyo sa ating ekonomiya. If you look at the data that was given to us by uh, Director Rasela, Yung 7 billion net financial flows courts through the banking system and this is only equivalent to 0.04% of the GDP. Two, the system of issuing employment permits is not working despite the adoption of the new policy instruments like the Joint Memorandum Circular. But we're glad that the issuance of SWPs has significantly gone down. Pero parang lumalabas dun sa data ng AEPs, kaliwaan po, Dahil bagamat bumaba nga po yung SWPs, umakyat naman sa 180% yung nabigyan ng AEPs. Ang dalangin naman natin ay siguradong naging maayos ang pagproseso ng mga papeles nito. Sa legal na pogo pa lang, uulitin ko po, legal na pogo pa lang, 6,678 foreign nationals na ang walang AEPs. Ito yung napatunayan natin last year. Paano pa kaya doon sa illegal? Pag tinignan natin ulit yung record, foreign nationals na pumasok dito, foreign workers, iba ang data ng PAGCOR, iba ang data ng DOLE, iba ang data ng Interagency Task Force. We have to put our acts together. Number three, POGOS are not helping generate employment for Filipinos. Talong-talo po ang mga Pinoy workers na nakawan na po tayo ng trabaho na naman, kung hindi natin pinagtuunan ng pansin at pinagtigpitan ng mga ito. Pogo employ primarily foreign nationals. It barely creates jobs for Filipinos. Only one out of ten. Uh, almost two. Barely two out of ten. Ang mga Pinoy sa Pogo uh, industry. Um, some uh, companies we flashed kanina, tatlong libo mahigit ang empleyado, not a single uh, Filipino ang, uh, ang nakalagay po dun sa report. Ikaapat, 
Pogos are not paying the right taxes. Ano po ulit ang rough estimate on uh, tax revenue loss from non-registered foreign Pogo workers? 5 billion annually. Yun pa lang po yung uh, nakolekta. And ang binanggit ni Attorney D, about 50 billion yung uh, uncollected po no? for, 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 for a year. Fifth, of course, lax regulation on Pogo is con contributory to the problem. Um, importante that we know who these people are. Ang PAGCOR should also side with the government na sila ay dapat nagbabayad ng franchise tax. Hindi yung, we just give licenses and bahala na si Batman whether or not ahabulin sila ng BIR o hindi. Tulungan natin ang gobyerno natin. Sixth, focus of great impact on social costs. It is burden, the peace, and order situation. As I've said, in Lumabas sa hearing, walang nagko-contest. 733 fugitives entered our country in 2019. Most of them came under the pretense of working here at associated sa Pogos. Mahirap pong magturo o magturo sa ating mga kababayan na magsumikap ka, mag-aral kang mabuti, magsipag ka sa iyong trabaho, Kung ipinapasok din natin sa kanilang isipan na maghintay ka na lang ng swerte, tumaya ka, magsugal ka, eh importante ho yung policy ng ating uh, pamahalaan when, when it comes to gambling, especially in online gambling. Finally, let me reiterate Article 12, Section 12 of the 87 Constitution affirms the Filipino first policy. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, Filipino muna, hindi pogo muna. Again, I'm not a fan of gambling, but I'm sure that you will all agree with me that gambling has been, is not consistent with our collective long-term vision of building a future where every Filipino enjoys a matatag, maginhawa, at panatag na pamumuhay. Magsama-sama po tayo na puksain ang mga problemang ito dahil hindi kaya ng Senado, hindi kaya ng isang ahensya ng pamahalaan ang sarilihin, ang uh, mga challenges at problemang uh, nasa ating uh, harapan wala na pong ibang magmamalasakit sa ating bayan kundi ang mga Pilipino magmalasakit po tayo sa ating inang bayan sa inyo pong lahat maraming salamat and uh, uh, this joint committee hearing is uh, hereby suspended maraming salamat po for your time thank you